Lord Dean. GTD. What does GTD stand for? Man, you are in a court of law. There are a lot of people in here. We can't hear you. Your Honor, you're going to have to make them speak up. What does GTD stand for? Got the draws, okay? <laughs> yeah, he got the draws. I've been drinking. I've been drinking. <laughs> Can't keep your eyes off my face. Uh, uh, right now. Wow. Okay. I want to sing a little song that uh, kept me going when I had troubles. at the beach everybody had matching towels somebody went under a dock and there they saw a rock but it wasn't a rock it was a rock lobster Yeah, you're gonna be okay. Motorboat? You play the motorboat? <laughs> you motorboat, son of a bitch, you old sailor, you. Let me suck them titties, babe. Let me suck them titties, babe. I'm home. Is that an arm baby? No, no, I don't do arm baby. Throw that baby to trash. Respect. Her. Sir, then get out. Then ask her. Ask her. I don't care. Ask her. Ask her. Ask her. Ask her. Ask her. Oh my god. Stop it. I'm a PhD. <laughs> Turbulence, people. Is it the shoes? Top of the morning, governors. That's right. It's time for biscuits and hot tea. You do realize that 
we can see you lying, right? Acknowledge me. What it do, baby? Top of the morning, governor. Right, it's time for biscuits and hot tea. I don't think you have the facilities for that, big man. Do you understand? It doesn't matter what you think! <laughs> And that's the bottom line, cause Stone Cold sets up. Is that an arm baby? Yo, no, I don't do arm babies. Throw that baby in the trash can. Respectfully. to the mess. God damn right. see salute in the chat to make sure you guys can hear me let me see salute in the chat to make sure you guys can hear me i need to shave i forgot i gotta i gotta start being presentable every day salute to the squad i'll see you guys down there in the chat let me know if you guys can hear me first before i start rambling while you guys are doing that i'll check my phone salute to the squad we made it on a hump day i act like we made it to friday but we almost there salute to the squad let me know in the chat what you guys can hear me it's so quiet over here Salute to the squad. Let's see. Salute to Mona D. I see you. Is my, my mic on? Okay, cool. Can you guys hear me? Okay, Alboski. Could you see it could be a little louder? Okay, let me see. You know what? Let me I didn't check my mic settings. Let me see. No, that's about that's actually about where I wanted at. Let's see here. I 
Salute to the squad. Hope everybody can hear me. Okay, for what happened? Salute to the squad. Project Libre. What happened with Zion? I just got up. I saw y'all saying something about Zion. But okay, you guys can hear me. Okay. Yeah, so you guys saying something about Zion. But I don't know what's going on with Zion. I just woke up. Salute to the homie Lady Bone. He mad at me back there because he wants some cat food, bro. <laughs> Salute to you, bro. All right. You guys can hear me. Okay. Let me see those locations in the chat. Let me see those locations in the chat. Your boy Theo is broadcasting live from Detroit, Michigan. Where are you guys watching me from? Let me know in the chat. Then you tell me about Zion here in a second because I want to I wanna know what's going on. I want to get the tea. Salute to the squad. We in here on a Wednesday. Let's get it. Let's go. Trash day. Trash day. Make sure you guys take out the trash cans. Melanin, they won. What it do, baby? No, you good. Salute to the squad. Hope everyone is doing well. What's going on, Melanin? What you doing out in PA? Melanin, what you doing? I seen, those, I seen those pictures in the Discord yesterday. What it do, baby? Ma'am, stop. <laughs> Hope everyone is doing well. Where y'all watching me from? Let me know. Mona D, I see you. Brandon, no doubt. I see you. Brandon down in, Brandon in Texas. I can't remember which city in Texas, but I think it goes something like this. Oh. I know you in Houston, bro. My soundboard, there's some days you get up and your soundboard game is off. I knew it today, like, ah, it's going to be a struggle. It's going to be a struggle. But <laughs> we get there. The long form of chance to tell you, the voice should be in the MC. Let's <laughs> see your movie. <laughs> Appreciate you, bro. I don't remember seeing you in the chat before. But <laughs> that's so funny. Crazy part is my voice is terrible. I just rolled out the bed. I'm terrible at this. Salute to the squad, man. Let's see. I need to actually practice like, like some type of um, exercises. Warm up my uh, voice every time. Okay, we got Detroit in the building. We got Sacramento in the building. Salute to the squad. We in here. Let's see. Man, he got a strip. Oh! Hey, yo, what the fuck? No, Zion, no! We got a. Augusta, Georgia in the house. Salute to you. We got H-Town. H-Town. Salute to all my Texas boys. Texas so nice, I'll drop it twice. Uh, now what y'all know about the Texas boys? We got Charleston in the building. We got Oklahoma. I got to get an OKC drop. No, I don't. Salute to you, Lamar. We got Baltimore in the building. We got Dallas in the building. Brand, damn, my bad, Brandon. You in Dallas. I thought you was in Houston. Okay, salute to you. Now, now I got where you at. We got Ohio in the building. We got Atlanta in the building. We got Chicago in the building. Project Leroy says, Theo, he turned super sim daddy to a pregnant stripper. Hey, yo, what the fuck? Man, hold on, bro. Scion, bro. This is, this is just what I think every time I see something like that happen. Wouldn't let that shit happen to me, though. But, sorry, Scion, bro. I don't be one. I don't be one no brothers having, I don't, I don't be one no guys be having kids before they 30. Like, on some real shit. I don't be one any men, let alone extremely successful men like Zion. No, bro. I know, I know it. It's easy to happen though, because when every when every woman that sees you is throwing her pussy at you, but Jesus Christ, bro, feel bad for you, Zion. <laughs> well, not bad. You made your decision. You made that bed. You gotta lay in it. Salute to you, Mark Cooper. Let's see what we got. We got Robert Platinum down in North Carolina. I see you, bro. I got North Carolina. Bro. Don't care Uncle Diggity, in L.A. California. Salute to everybody. Salute to Project Leroy in Chicago. We got Indianapolis in the building. What else we got? We got Dallas in the building. We got Big Jersey. Salute to you, D's Nuts. I got to get that up, upload, though. And I wasn't trying to I wasn't trying to put you on blast the other day, bro. I was just being silly, man. I was just... But one thing I do realize, like, I'm still getting used to streaming. It's like, sometimes I just be talking. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did say that. No offense intended whatsoever, man. I was just joking with you, bro. We got Detroit in the building. We got Inglewood in the building. We got Rod, the God down there at H-Town. Where is Smitty at? Smitty, I know Smitty. I don't even got to look. I know Smitty representing, I know it's PG County. I think it's, yeah, I know it's somewhere out there, out in Maryland. Salute to you, uh, Smitty. Let's see, music, the music was too loud. Okay, well, I got I got to turn down. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I got I had some tea. I don't like tea, but yeah. Let's see. 26 and no kids. No, Pops told me to wait till. Bro, there you go, man. There you go, bro. I don't even have my drops to get to. Bang! Bang! It's good! Yeah, man, I suggest that, man. Like I said, I had my son at 23, and I shouldn't have had my son at 23, but I didn't have any more children. That's one thing. That's, that's one thing. I'll at least give myself that. I had my one, and I was like, no, nah, man, I. Uh, no, nah, I can't. Uh, I, I can't do that. But yeah, I see that any dude, man, don't hide. Don't even be thinking about kids until you're thirty. You just gotta protect your speed. But you just gotta protect your speed. Excuse me, protect your seat. Especially if you fucking a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Salute to. We got Grand Blank in the house. Salute to you, uh, Detroit zero eight six one. What's up, bro? I seen you around. All right, let's get it started, guys. Today we have. Make sure you guys are hitting the like button. Subscribe to the channel. We're trying to get to fifty thousand subscribers. We're almost hitting one year 
on on YouTube in like two weeks. We got another six thousand subscribers to go. I know that may seem like a lot. Like, no, you can't get six thousand subscribers in two weeks. I got six thousand subscribers last month. So yeah, I may only get three thousand subscribers. But yeah, let's see. It's too late for him. Thea, oh, man. So I, I question Zion, man, just with his old weight issue, bro. Because people talked about, you know, people compared him to Charles Barkley. Like, you know, Charles Barkley was heavy too. But Charles Barkley was heavy when he first started. And then when he first came into the league. And then he was in shape all the way until the end, bro. Like, Zion was young out here, 300-something pounds, man. It's like, man, I, I don't know, man. It just seems weird. And it seems like there's no accountability down there in New Orleans for him. And I don't know, bro. Sad to see, bro. What it do, Pinball? What's going on, Pinball? Hitting the like button in Clarksville, Tennessee. Salute to you, bro. <laughs> The pinball player 65 and all my truck drivers out there on the road, my CDL guys getting it out there, man. Y'all be safe. Corey Joe in the line. I see you. 50K on the way. Facts, bro. Facts. Sweet Life says you had the wildest laugh. <laughs> yeah, people, that's that's funny, man. A couple things before I, I didn't think, I didn't take into account before I started my channel. I said that. It's my voice. I've always had this voice, so I didn't think anything of it. I didn't think that it would be helpful where people would like it. The other thing is my laugh. I never knew anything about my laugh. I just thought I had a regular laugh. Salute to Clan's car. Up in New York, great to have you, bro. All right, guys, let's get to it. Today we got a clip from Jason Black. Salute to the homie Squeegee Kid, aka Z Whiff. He's 22 and, she, and she's pushing up. Hey, yo, what the fuck? Sad man, it's sad, bro. It's one thing to get the uh, the wrong. I mean, you getting the wrong getting the wrong woman pregnant can ruin your life, but just those type of women, it's like. It's gonna ruin your life. It's gonna be all over the tabloids, and then you, you, then your baby, then your child. I had a baby with a stripper. That's how I met. What you met, mom? She was shaking their cheeks at the. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sad, man. Sad. Yeah, yeah, we get to it. <laughs> we we'll get to it, baby. Like I said, I was married. I'm divorced. My ex wasn't great. Obviously, you know, she put me through some issues. But I watched some of this shit with Kendra G and some of this other shit. I'm like, she wasn't that bad. She got on my goddamn nerves, but she wasn't that bad. She didn't have me up at night plotting the plotting the uh, deletion case. So. Unfortunate, man. Let's get to it. He's a buster like OJ Mayo. Let's see. What's going on? There? All right. Let's see. Make sure you guys check out Smoke and Talk as well. Let's get into it, man. Let's get to it. Yeah, make sure you guys hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. What else do I got here? Looking for a new show sponsor. Make sure you guys are hitting the like button. Moz, let me know how likes are getting. And then, yeah, we'll get to it. And then also as well, I've said this. People have been hitting me up. I have the consultations. You want me to look at your page? We can sit back and figure it out. I can give you a lot of YouTube game that a lot of people don't know because I've learned a lot. That's why I got going on 14 million views in less than a year. Bang! Bang! It's good! I talk my shit from time to time, but not that often. All right, let's get to it, man. Let's get to the video. So Jason Black was talking to a woman. That's what I was bringing up Squeegee Kid before earlier. He said, dude, you need to react to this one call. So this is just one call. This entire video stream is going to be a one call. What's going on, Corey Joe? I'll see you. Oh, Squeegee Kid, I was just bring you up, bro. Salute to you, uh, salute to you, Z-Whiff. Squeegee was like, hey, man, you should react to this call from Jason Black. And it's funny, Squeegee, because he had he had a few calls, obviously, that night, but he talked to two women. And I thought you was talking about the first call with the woman who divorced her husband after 22 years. And she was trying to make it seem like she wasn't like them, all those other women who leave their husband for no reason. And it turned out she was just like every other woman who leaves her husband for no reason. And I thought you were talking about that call. And I was going to play that. I might play that one tomorrow because that one, that one was crazy enough in itself. The lady had so much delusion. But... I, can't, I was like, but maybe you're talking about this other one. In the very last call is the woman, is one you were talking about. So that's what we're going to play right now. Make sure you guys are hitting the like button. OJ Mayo, yeah. What OJ Mayo like doing? OJ Mayo was doing drugs, though. Wasn't he like, that's one thing. If you get kicked out the league for like drugs, like we talking, I think he was doing like meth and shit. Like, not no weed, man. Like, uh, it's crazy, bro. Let's see. All right, let's get to it. Zion's. Roger Lever says Zion Williamson probably going to be against <laughs> she next week, <laughs> bro. Bang! <laughs> Bang! It's good. All right, guys, let's get to it. Make sure you guys are hitting the like button. Make sure you guys are hitting the like button. We're looking for a uh, new show sponsor. Excuse me, I can't talk today, man. Let's see. All right, let's get to it. Caller from Air Code Seven One Two. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where you calling from? And in in this call, just give you guys just a little bit more. A background on it. So basically, this woman just calling in, and she's just she's a single mom. But it's just that she's going to check so many of the boxes of the things we say, and, and just watch her just make mistake after mistake. And it's just and Jason Black, salute to Jason, man, because he handled this entirely well, way better than I could. Because I'd be like, "Bitch, are you stupid?" But 
neither here or there. That's why I don't take calls. I just do re the reaction videos. Let's get to it, man. Hey, Jason. My name is Crystal. I'm calling from Iowa. Hello, Crystal. And what Iowa is on your mind? Um, I don't really have a lot that I guess I want to discuss. I guess knowing how you are, once you talk to me, you'll decide if you want to point out some things. But honestly, I just gave you a call because I wanted to give you thanks. Um, I've been listening to you for probably like the last maybe five or six months, and it's a lot of things that I've needed to correct and like do and I wasn't willing to like be honest with myself about it and you are the truth and I really really appreciate you oh thank you very much I'm glad to hear that what exactly were some of the changes you felt like um you need to make um just staying in the position of earning um acknowledging my true spirit on the inside when it comes to like dating and things like that. Um, cause I've, I've at a period of time, I guess I lived like according to what I thought was right. And what perceived to be, you know, like oh, I'm doing everything right or whatever. But when I would interact with males, things wouldn't go right. And so then I realized it's you and, and, you know, you need to correct some of these things. I don't feel like I gave you a great description, but yeah. well, if you if certainly if you've used it as an opportunity to become introspective, you haven't been standoffish about the things you've been told because a lot of folks use that as their excuse to bow out. So they act like, oh, I was offended and this, that, and the other. Here's the problem: if you're stuck in your ways, then if what you're hearing isn't offending you, that's probably the problem. You don't placate people who are stuck in their ways because if you're driving your car down the wrong lane of the freeway. We don't need to be nice to you. We need to stop you. That's what we need right. to do. And a lot of folks, they want to hear what they want to hear, even if it's dead wrong. Exactly. They just want to hear what they want to hear. So it can be outrageously difficult to get otherwise. Think about the woman who just got off the phone, Vixen. Could you imagine a 25-year-old yeah. listening to her? A 25-year-old listening to her, and they need to get the message right so the first time. And pants. this woman is devoid of logic or reason Right to the point that the whole point she called in, this man was not providing financially. The problem was the money going back all the way to her father. That's the basis that she used for how she's entitled. So let me let me pause it. For, let me pause it again. So as I said, as I said a few minutes ago, this was the second caller that he talked to before he talked to a woman for about 45 minutes, 45 to 50 minutes. And this woman, as I said, we might play that. I might play that one tomorrow, man, because it's actually. This more that was more of a crazy one. Like this chick was just all over the place. But basically, that was the crux of the conversation overall. Because he did like a four hour stream, and they were talking about so many women who think they're boss babes. And then he also he transitioned to a lot of women that it translated over that a lot of the conversation translated over to speaking about how a lot of women will stay in a marriage and leave their husband. And it's usually uh, it's usually for they're not happy, or the bigger reason is is for financial issues. So that's the thing. So keep that in the back of your mind about that. When because this lady's going to talk about her, she's going to give her story, man. It's going to take some twists and turns. Believe you me. But keep that in the back of your mind is that leaving your husband over financial, uh, for financial reasons because that's what the previous caller did. So that kind of was like an underlying theme. And this woman swerving down, she she was trying to make it seem like it was every other reason she left her husband other than money after twenty years, and. It led back to it was just the money. So just keep that in the back of you guys' mind. She married this man. She's got disciplinary problems. And then when you ask her about it, RM, she literally you. looks you in the face and says, no, Bill money Rames, was not you. the problem. And then you say, well, why'd you file for divorce? He wasn't doing for a family what he should. That's, that's, that's a metaphor, doing right. what he should. What do you mean? He wasn't playing the role of protector and provider. Provider? What was he, what was he not providing? Because you just said it wasn't about money. Well, he wasn't providing for his family. Wasn't providing how? Well, it wasn't fi providing financially. I thought you just said it wasn't financially. <laughs> Facts. The average, <laughs> the average female right. will not give the right interrogatories to shuffle past that nonsense because I know what the answer is. But if you're just taking her word for it, once she said it wasn't financial, you're following behind that. Whereas we as men, we don't believe that. We're not going to accept that as an answer because we know it's not true. So we stick to it 
until we get down to what we know is the truth. And I'll be damned. There it is. But the average female is just going to walk away deceived and worse, walk away confused without them telling you the truth. Well, there is nothing wrong with a female having a financial requirement. You can have whatever financial requirement you wish to have. Whether or not you can actually achieve it is a different matter. <laughs> Whether or not you can actually hold it is a different matter. And what it will cost right. you, even if you do achieve it, what will it cost you? Well, that may be a different matter still. But you certainly can have whatever requirement you wish to have. I think that it's better for us to know exactly what that is. Because the problem is folk, folk like Vixen cause confusion. If a, if women are literally able to say this is the dollar amount and they actually mean that, then we can have an honest conversation. I've said that forever. If the women will have a, will give an honest amount and have an honest conversation, we, we can actually make some progress. And I'm sorry to stop it one more time just to give you a little bit more context. The other thing that they were talking about in the previous call, because that was an older woman. I believe this woman's in her 30s. The other woman was like in her 50s. And he brought this point up. I've always said this, and you know, kind of lines, kind of along the lines similar to Kevin Samuels, thinking that older women, I've made videos about this, older women don't give younger women game. Like they refuse to. And but JB was saying, even if an older woman does, so many women are so confused because that previous caller. Like I said, she was just, I might play that tomorrow. She was just all over the place. So he said, even if you were attempting to give a younger woman game, nobody can follow you because this doesn't make any sense. So back to me. But as long as they say they lies say. like, well, you know, a woman should stick by her man no matter how little his income is. And then she tells you, oh, I divorced my husband because his income got too little. Right. And I will say for me, um, I was married before. So for me, um, finances was a big thing. And when I walked away from the situation, I just said, well, we grew apart. We, we're not saying eye to eye. We just, you know, all of these things. And you use all these metaphors. To, that I didn't want to you offer. use all these metaphors to avoid saying what you actually mean, because you know right. that saying that it was financial isn't very flattering. You know that it attracts questions about you and your character that you may or may not want to answer. Now, I'm not saying that it's necessarily valid that it would invoke questions about your character. I'm not saying that, but you know it does. You it's know it funny. does. Right. So the point is. So let me avoid it from you, the gate. <laughs> yes, what I'm saying is that you all start practicing being deceptive because you are afraid of the social backlash of it, as opposed to saying, this is what I want. So that the sexual marketplace may give you an appraisal. That's cool. You have no problem doing that with I your agree. car. You have no problem doing that with your house. You have no problem doing that for a school. But when it comes to you personally, all of a sudden it's like, no, I only want the answers I want. And even if I have to lie about it. And all it really does is rob you from all the best options. A woman who walks into a situation being deceptive, not telling this man the real reasons that she's there, got him believing something that's not true. Because here's the real thing. I agree. For example, you said that you were not happy with your husband. How much money was he making? Um, well, he was like in the streets a little bit. He did a little time when he came home because of where we lived at the time. He wasn't in a place where he, he was could in, really make money because he, he was, was in the selling. streets. Huh? Uh, he was in the streets a little bit. Here we, here we go. Oh, well. A little, a little bit, bit ma'am. That's face. like being a little pregnant. He was in the streets a well, little that's bit. Why I just take that back. Can, fellas, You're absolutely right. Fellas, wouldn't that, that be not, wouldn't that be nice right. if we could do that with the females? Wouldn't that be nice if we could do that? Yeah, baby. I mean, I wasn't cheating on you. I was just sleeping with a little bit. <laughs> Can you guys please hit the like button, Benny Moore? I see you. Yeah, I, was, I was just sleeping <laughs> with a little bit. Wouldn't it be nice if we could do that, fellas? Well, let me let me correct. I apologize. Let me correct that because. That's just how I speak. And you're right. When a person hear that, that is not factual. You can't be in the streets a little bit. You Either you in there or you're not, period. So you're right. I have to mean what I say, say what I mean. He was in the streets at a period of time. It was a short period of time from when we had started. 
he ended up doing time when he came home. Okay, but um, but you're saying that that was husband material. Yeah, I was real young when I chose him. And I was misguided a little bit. Ma'am, I was real young, ma'am. We were all real young. Um no, nah, mm-hmm. he in the streets. That's not a young issue. That's yes, a yes. different issue. Come on. Now. Well, let's, it was let's... more like a, I guess, father daughter issue. Well, I let's... thought like let's not he was a great you. catch because of my trauma and my brokenness. So okay. yes, I, I did think he was a great catch at that time. Yeah, because, because it takes it to, in this environment. You know damn well he's dodging drugs and thugs. He he could get himself right. shot up tonight, and you sitting right there with him. So when you're willing to accept those chances. That's a level of recklessness. That's a level of severe recklessness. And how we do one thing is how we do all things. So that's the reason why females who get in those kinds of situations or whatnot, it tends to be very unstable. So it didn't matter who you married. It was going to end the same way. Because if you're willing to take up with this guy under such obviously flawed and reckless circumstances, it's only going to be a matter of time that locking you two together in the same room is going to end the only way it can. That's the way it always ends. You have no choice in the matter. Are you saying that just because he was a person in the streets? Are you saying that because of me as an individual that no matter who I'm I saying chose? Both. I'm saying that maybe that you, went over my head a little I'm bit. saying that you chose someone who is, if, you, if a woman chooses a guy who is living a lifestyle that is highly reckless and that could get mm-hmm. her whatever amount of trouble he can get into, she can get into too. Either this person is criminal or this person is extremely reckless. Oh, I, I own it. Cause Very in his case, I'm not going to say, yeah, I'm not going to say that he was criminal. I'm not going to say that he was reckless because he was making deliberate conscious decisions. So he was the one actually doing the work, mm-hmm. but you're choosing out of all the men you could have chosen. You rejected all the others and said that one, that one right there. So what I'm saying is if, if his primary characteristic is living street life and you know that comes with an outrageous level of risk and you said, no, I don't want these other men, I want him. Then what you're saying is I mm-hmm. want all of those inherent risks. So when a female starts running headlong into hazards, then that's either because she's a fellow criminal and I don't think you're criminal or she is reckless. So in his case, he's criminal, but you're reckless. You put those two together. I agree fully. You put those two together. What it adds up to is probably some tremendously hot sex and some exciting times, but it is ultimately going to end in ruin because it has to. Because you're not going to stop being reckless and he's not going to stop being criminal. Salute, salute to A.D. Blackman. Shot herself in the foot before the race even started. Fire. Bang! Bang! It's good! Fox. And this call is going to take a turn. It's going to take a couple turns. So I hope y'all got your popcorn ready and y'all, you know, cheer reclined or whatever, whatever y'all watching me, wherever y'all watching me at. Yeah, man, it's going to take a turn for the worst. So here's the one thing I will give this young lady. She was not combative. I would say young lady. I think she's like 35 or some shit. She'll say her age if she hasn't already. But she is, she's, she actually is here to learn. And we talk about so many of these women, they just here to fight and, and not, and, you know, to... to the need to be right. This woman actually is in here to learn. It's unfortunate because she's going to make so many mistakes up until this point. But I'll at least give her this. And she's been listening to JB for a while. So at least she's attempting to turn her life around. But so many of these women, put them, they dig themselves in a hole that they can't dig themselves out of, unfortunately. Let's get back to it. And uh, even if he stops being criminal, mm-hmm. you're not going to stop being reckless. Not without some help or an intervention Mm -hmm. or if life kicks you in the back of the head hard enough. That's generally what happens. People either run out of courage or run out of time. One or the other. That's generally what happens. So I feel like, so I feel like since I found you and life had already kind of kicked me in the head backwards, this is how I'm getting my balance now. Wait a minute. Say it again. Your phone's muddling on you. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me a little better now? Okay. What did you say? I said, I fully agree. And I would say I had got to a point where, that, you know, like, my money, bitch? Back. I'm like, yeah, I definitely experienced that. How and many kids did I you have with him? With him, I had two. How many did you have with him before you were legally married? None. Um, when I met him, 
our relationship was what you would probably consider, I don't know, a statutory situation. He was much older than me. All right, so she says, let me grab the super chat here. She says that they didn't have any children. Like they had, they have two children, but they didn't have any more. They didn't have any before they was married. We'll put a pin in that. Remember that. We're going to get right back to it. Salute to the homie Project Leroy. He says, I was real young plus trauma with no father. Equals facts, bro. I got you, man. I'll send them now. Facts. Where's my money, bitch? I've got to change that today. <laughs> facts, Project Leroy, man. You're right, bro. I don't even. What's, what's understood doesn't need to be said. I was real young plus trauma. It's sad, man, because they all have the same story, man. So they all have the same story. Appreciate you, Project Leroy. Let's see. Let me grab all. Um, yeah, that's a fact, bro. Let me. That's a fact. Let's see. Squeezy Kid says, what's going on, Squeezy? Thanks for reviewing this call. Hit the like button. Super chat party. Let's go. Bang! Bang! It's good! Oh, no doubt, Squeezy, man. That's what I said. You know, you already know, Squeezy, man. I, li I listen to the squad. But yeah, you put that in there, and I was like, oh, let me check this out. And I spent, shit, that was like, I spent like three hours, man. Like three, four hours listening to all this yesterday. And like I said, we still might do the other call tomorrow. So appreciate you, man. No doubt, man. Make sure I didn't miss any more. So I'm going to whisper. Let's get back to it, guys. Let's get back to it. I think I got one more. Let me grab that one. Let's see. Oh, yeah. I should have did this. Put your seatbelts on, y'all. Turbulence, people. I got to start hitting that drop more. Salute to the real Stacey Prince. And make sure you guys are subscribed. Before I grab this last super chat, make sure you guys subscribe to Mona D. We're trying to get Mona D monetized. She the next one up. I don't know where you're looking at as far as subscribers, Mona D. Let us know in the chat. And yeah, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you're not. We're trying to get all our all our people in here who support the channel monetized. But she's close. I, I think she's around, I don't know, 800 or so. I don't know. Let Mona let us know in the chat. Salute to Ace Louise. She said, salute to the squad, man, from Canada. I got you, bro. Canada! Where's my money, bitch? <laughs> Send the, the warmest of welcomes to all, our na to all my neighbors in the north. Salute to you, Ace Louise. He said, oh, yes, that's right, man. Salute to the squad, man. Great to have you, H. Louise. Let's get back to it. That's always, bro. I imagine. <laughs> so, like I say, but by the same token, Jimmy, I see. and I understand that some of you didn't come from the greatest home environments, and I get that. That's not lost on me. I'm not unsympathetic to it, okay? That's not lost on me. I get it. I do. But by the same token, Glad at to some it, point in a person's life, we become adults. Nobody's parents give them everything that they need to deal with the life and the world and every circumstance they're going to meet nope. as advantageously as possible. Nobody gets all they need. Some folks get more. Some folks get less. Some folks get a lot less. But and, at some point. And, 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 and I'm sorry to stop it again, but he just made a great point. It, it, remember, it reminded me of a comment someone left on my channel last week I, I, I basically what jason was just saying is that uh, no one gets a hundred percent game plan from their parents like your parents can try to prepare you for life as, as, as you know as much as they could to the best of their abilities but nobody gets a hundred percent that's kind of obvious but the reason why i stopped it was that i believe i was doing a video last week and i was talking about how I didn't grow up, like my parents didn't live together. I didn't grow up in a two-parent household because my parents weren't together, but my father was always in my life and helped me, you know, and, and raised me and whatnot. So I never, like, it was never like no thing, you know, for me. And, and what I realized as I've gotten older and watching all this kind of, my parents raised it, you know, raised me decently enough. And someone left a comment on my page and it just blew me away. And he was like, dude, you were lucky because everyone just doesn't have that. Everyone doesn't have that guidance, man. Like, I knew I was lucky having a dad around because the majority of my cousins didn't, and I recognize that as a child, that majority of my cousins didn't have their fathers around. So I recognize that. But he made a point about how he never had his parents. He didn't have any of his parents growing up, and then he was homeless at 13, and he said he was lost. He, was being mis he didn't have any guidance the majority of his life, and it still affects him to this day, and he's almost 70. So... That just kind of tells me, man, regardless of you, you know, your parents might have had your shortcomings or whatnot. And I'm not saying every parent is worth being praised, but you might not have it as bad as others. So just wanted to put it out there. Let's get back to it. I'll shut up. You're responsible for filling in the gaps in your training. You're responsible for <laughs> filling in the parts you don't have. The parts that your parents didn't give you, you're responsible for figuring it out to your best yeah. advantage and in your best interest. That's for every human being. All of us have to deal with that to greater or lesser degrees, but all of us do. So once you become an adult, 
At that point, the question isn't was, did you recognize this was in your best interest? The question is, do you recognize what you're doing? Ms. McCree. And once we get Mm -hmm. to a point where it's like, yes, I'm cognizant of what I'm doing because my home life environment prepared me to ride these roads. Okay, well, you'd probably be better on some other roads. Well, I wasn't conditioned for those. I might want to slow down and get ready for them. Yeah, let me run these streets. And well, like I say, at that point, yeah. what's going to happen next is going to be what happens next. So while I am sympathetic right. to your home environment and everything that happened there, and that's not lost on me, that doesn't alleviate you from the fact that you're cognizant and understood. Well, I was young. Yes, but there's a difference between young and does not understand. There's a difference between those two things. Because there are a lot of folk who grow up with screwed up mamas and dads and can't stand their mothers and their fathers because they're messed up. Because of some of the things they were doing or had them doing. There's a, there's a whole bunch of folk who grow up in that environment and it's like, yeah, screw mom and dad. Perfect square, I see you. Because I see how messed up they are. It doesn't become, mm. well, mom and dad did this, this is this family business and this is this family culture. Everybody doesn't do that. That's very true. I agree, um, After my childhood, me and my father actually have bonded very, very closely. But like you bitch? said, you know, me and my mom, we are strange. And I would like to things like hard thing to see. But yeah, you're right. Once you become cognizant of what's going on around you, you are able to really look at yourself and really see what you're doing. Let me grab this super chat here. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I, you're, you're right, D. Marco. Oh, and uh, RM, I saw you see there about smoking talk. So, smoking talk. I, I don't know if you call that smoking talk. That that's that's their channel. That smoking talk is Mr. Severe. If you guys don't know, that's Severe. And then you have Brian and Selena Mason. So you see Selena, Selena and Brian, their husband and wife, and then Severe, who you see smoking talk. He's Brian's brother. So it's actually three of them. It's Brian, Selena Mason, and then there's Severe. Severe is usually on the three. Uh, Severe is usually on the Smoke and Talk account, I think. But yeah, that's how it is. I, I just know you, you're new. Let's see. Let me grab these super chats here. But right before I do, somebody had a great comment here. I wanted to read that one. DeMarco left one as well. This one right here from the homie Zaddy. Let's see. Okay, I got you, Corey Joe. Zaddy, uh, Zaddy was <laughs> Zaddy was right. If someone's over the age of 30 years old, I shut down childhood trauma, stories, excuses. At some point, you have to take the wheel. Once you know better, you do better. Facts, man. I, and I agree with you as well. I agree with you as well. I think childhood trauma plays a significant part in people's, you know, in their, in their future. But at some point, you can't use that shit as no excuse, man. Get some fucking therapy, man. I talk to somebody. If you don't believe me, do, just do something. It's good she took accountability. Yeah, she's going to take accountability as well, Bella Rings. Let me grab these super chats here, and we'll get right back to it. And uh, yeah, DeMarco is my father was always around and I would be nothing without his presence. But to be honest, if it wasn't for my older brother teaching me a lot, i will be lost, man. And you see, you know, it's, I guess it's all on how you raised, man. See, I was the oldest. So I never had, like people talk about like their older, like brother, I never had that person to look up to because I was the oldest, you know what I mean? So I never had that big brother type deal. So I've never really had that. I think that's why I've had a fondness for, well, I got like two older cousins I kind of always look to, but even though I never really saw them that much, you know, we live in different households, but yeah, I, I, I get that, man. But yeah, my father, I always say well, without my father, man, I have no idea where I would be. It's not even like I was, I was, a, I wasn't a bad kid or anything like that. So I don't think that I would, I would have automatically been like a street kid. Cause I was always smarter than that. I always, I knew early on like that street shit didn't pay. And, um, but yeah, I always wonder how, where I've been without my pops, man. I don't, I don't think I'll be the man. I don't think I'll be a, um, I don't think I'll be a stand up dude, stand up and on the square. I think I'll be, you know, I'll be here, but I don't know how much, how manly I would be. Let's put it like that. Salute to the homie Mark Kendall. He says a gym can't be polished. A gym can't be polished without friction. Not a man perfected without trial. Seneca, facts, bro. Facts, man. That's a great <laughs> Absolutely, Mark Kendall. Appreciate the uh, super chats as well, man. Super, appreciate the super chat. And Mark, be holding me down in the comments, man. Appreciate you, bro. Let's see here. Salute to Selena Mason. Selena Mason's out in Baltimore. Bitch, I'm from Baltimore. You say you was, I never see you. What part you on? I got some family on the Alameda. Selena Mason, one half of the Mason crew. Make sure you guys are subscribed to Smoking Talk. She says, greeting, bro. Theo Coop, do better squad podcast, fam, and all the moderators. Here we go. Bang! Bang! It's good! Hey, Selena, dropping a five on your board. I got five on Make sure you guys are subscribed to Smoke and Talk. I don't know. I think they go live today. I could be mistaken. Let's see. Let me make sure I didn't miss any more super chats. I got one from She Found Her Father. Says Mark, 
Let's see. Mona D needs yourself today. Facts, bro. Bang! Bang! It's good. That's good looking too, Corey Joe. Mona D needs you guys subscribers today. Mona D. Mona D was in the chat. Mona D probably in the gym right now. I know she used to be working out in the morning while she listening. So yeah, Mona D's. Excuse me. My apologies. Mona D's channel is pinned to the top of the chat. If you guys could do your boy Theo a favor, click on that link, and then yeah, man. Yeah, go subscribe to her channel. Let me know in the chat what you guys do. Appreciate you, Corey Joe, representing Atlanta. Atlanta. Good to have you, as always, bro. Versus living under this security blanket of this is why I'm doing it because this happened to me. You're right. You should start having children or not even having children, just stepping into adulthood. You have to be cognizant of what's happening, to be aware, to be alive. I don't normally advise people to break up their relationships because I tell I don't never tell anybody to break up with somebody or divorce somebody because I ain't coming to snuggle up with you, you know. Now unless <laughs> unless somebody's doing something to children. Now if that's happening, uh, you better get away from them. If that's not happening, that's like right. chasing, she chasing me around the house with a butcher knife. Oh, you might want to move. I'm not going. Mm -hmm. Not going to tell you divorce or break up. I'm not going to suggest that. If you do, that's on you. Well, Jason, what do you suggest? You might want to move to a house across the street. Maybe y'all need to start sleeping in different apartments. But I'm not going to tell you to break up with her because I'm not coming to snuggle up with you. But for family members, that's a different matter. I would gladly tell you to go t <laughs> tell your parents go to hell or your brothers or your sisters. Whether now, I would gladly tell you that because there's a bunch of y'all need to get the hell away from them folk. I didn't grow up with a family where people did drugs. I didn't. Um, I'm as straight laced as you can possibly name, but do you hear the veracity in my voice when they talk, when somebody talks about doing that garbage around their kids? Cause I know what it's like to be in an environment yeah. where you did not have that. So I am extra sensitive to that because I know what it's like to be in an environment where seeing a beer in a refrigerator to me is like seeing a dead rat in a refrigerator. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to stop it. Good point by Jason. Great point as well. I just had this one comment. I, I've got to read it, and I just got a super chat, so it's justified for me. Stop it. I got to read this one right here. And he, Jason also brought up a, another point. My dad, for those who don't know, I'll be. I turn forty next month. So my father is sixty. Both my parents are sixty-three years old. Me and my father were talking a few months ago. We were in his basement working on working on his working on something in his basement. And Where's we, my money, bitch? We were bitch? talking about something. Even though my parents weren't together. My my like I said, my dad was always there, but my dad brought up something that I had I was not privy to, and he was one hundred percent right. We were, I don't know who we were talking about, but he looked at me dead in my face, and he said, "But he, son, you don't get it. You don't know what it's like to grow up in a household. You've never no, you've never grown up in a household where you never grew up in a household where people use drugs. Like I, I didn't grow up in a household like where my parents were on drugs. Like my mom didn't do anything, and my dad just smoked weed. Like you know, he had to drink every now and then, but yeah, so like." That mentality, like growing up, because my my father not his not his parents, but his older siblings. And my father was one of ten, and he's like the third, the, like on the bottom of the of totem pole. And all of my father's brothers and sisters, except maybe one of them, was on drugs. And like he just lost two sisters. He lost his first sister this year, and then he lost his second one uh, this year. Man, and they were all they were all drug addicts at one point. So my father was real big on that shit. Like, so excuse me. Facts over personality says, I feel so lucky to have my parents growing up. My mom and dad and 10 older sisters. Hey. Hey, yo, what the fuck? Jesus, having 10 sisters. That just blows my mind. My mom and dad and 10 older sisters love my parents. Been married for 71 years last week, bro. Bang! Bang! It's good! Yo, what's going on, Chelsea? I see you. Show facts over personality some love. Parents ma married for 70 years. That's incredible to you. That's incredible, man. Props to you. Let me grab the super chat. We'll get right back to it, man. I think some people, yeah, man. I think I, I think I realize, I realize that having that conversation. Yo, if y'all don't hit the like button, I'm about to, bro. That's shameful. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let y'all find a wherewithal to hit the like button. Somebody call. Somebody wake up, Floyd. He gonna come out here in a second. Soon to the homie Grove talk about Kofa. Kofa is our show sponsor, bro. I got something for you, man. Matter of fact, I think if I can remember how to do this. I'm so terrible at this. Salute to the squad, man. Look at your cash. Look at your cash. Bubbly. Look at your cash. Bubbly. Like, like Mark Coop said, man, it's, it's just man training. I couldn't, that's what it, I couldn't really put, I don't, how would I be without my, without my dad? Mark Cooper said the best in the, in the chat. It's man training. That's what it is more than anything. It's man training. And then especially you need that man training if, your mom isn't that strong, you know, obviously in that area, but then also, especially if you grow up in the, sh in the hood, in, a, in, a, in an extremely 
poor environment, bro, you have to have that, man. So to the homie, Growth Talk by Kofa. He says, ties of the smokable veganism. And the older I got, the more I thank my pops. I definitely don't know where I'll be without facts, bro. Bang! Bang! It's good! Bro, I, feel the exact, I feel the exact same way, bro. That's why I want to get pops on the podcast. But I'm, I'm tired of begging this dude. He'll be here one day. So to you, Kofa. You didn't, you're our new show sponsor. I'll go ahead and update that on the scroll. Someone says their parents were married 32 years. Says my Mr. Jersey worthy. Okay, that's that's great, man. Before they, uh, I'm sorry for that. I'm so grateful. I had my father in my life. Yeah, facts, bro. Facts. All right, let's get to it, man. Let's get back to it. Appreciate you, Kofa. Let me update this here in a second, man. We might have to make wake up Floyd, man. Hit the like button. This is the last time I'm telling y'all. That's for me seeing alcoholic beverages in the refrigerator. I'm like, you might as well put motor oil or urine in there. I'm like, what what is this doing? To me, it's it's mm. a foreign object. So when I hear about what's happened to you all, I see it as demonic. I see it for what it is. It's, it's not lost on me at all. And at this point right now, if your mother was a major factor in that, I think it's best to send her on her damn way because the only thing that she could do with your, the grandkids is start the process all over. If, if she has not demonstrated that she's got anything redeemable to add to the gene pool, then she needs to be quarantined from it. <laughs> now, and maybe your father needs to get his ticket too. Who knows? But my point is, no, I, I don't, I don't begrudge you that at all. For those of you who had those upbringings and things, and you had that kind of garbage going on and mama was a victim of a little whorehouse and all she did was pass it down. And you've had enough sense not to do so. Yeah. She needs to be inoculated from the gene pool. Facts, bro. She sure does. The world has enough damn problems. And I, as a person who didn't have that going on in my life when I grew up, I'm especially infuriated having to see other people suffer over that. Because I know what it's like to not have that. And I know how much better it would be. And I've had to overcome other things. So I'm familiar with how difficult it is to overcome things. But it's even harder as Harder than hell to have to do that when you're fighting with this kind of handicap. Jamaican Red Rub, salute. Now that's inexcusable. That's inexcusable. You have no right to force upon your children a lesser life than you had. You have an obligation to at least try to give them a better one than you had. These are your damn genes. These are your damn genes. This is your legacy. You've got, you've got more to do than that. You have an obligation not to do that. Not to. How are we looking on likes, y'all? Thank you so much. Um, and I definitely take that very much to my heart. Um, I do everything that I can to make sure that I'm trying uh, to always exude the best things for my legacy and just be there, be present, and you know, I, I can't even think of all the words right now. A little bit nervous. I'm kind of really excited to be talking to you, too. But um, I agree. Our legacy is extremely important. And, and what we feel so down to them is very, very important to who they're going to become in this world. Well, definitely, I'm glad to hear you're taking it seriously. That is the very first step, is stopping and acknowledging that there's a problem and it can be very, that's, as Malcolm X said, that's the most difficult thing in the world is to find out what is in you and to accept what is in you and what you know of yourself. That's the hardest thing in the world because there's not a roadmap for it. You don't know how far is too far. You know, especially if you're growing up, you can't be re-raised. You can't be raised all over again by some folks who knew what the hell they were doing. You kind of got to knock around and find out for yourself what the proper boundaries are. There's nothing wrong with great sex there's nothing wrong with excitement. There's nothing wrong with exploring things. There's everything wrong with doing it recklessly. Quiet Storm says 213 watch and 172 likes. I got Floyd right here ready to send him in. I, I, I'll allow it. It's okay. Let me get, if I can get those likes to 190. I'm not, can I get 18 more likes? Can we get it to 190? 190 and then I'll, I'll leave Floyd on the sideline. We get 18 more likes. Not asking that much, y'all. There's everything wrong with that. There's a reason why drug dealers, criminals, and whatnot, and STDs go hand in hand. There's a reason why those environments are breeding grounds of overdoses and STDs. Overdoses, STDs, and gunshots. 
nobody's got proper boundaries. So they're taking all the things that we ordinarily like and then they're, but they're taking them to reckless extremes. And if you don't have proper That's boundaries up, and proper guidelines, it becomes very, very easy to get in very big trouble. I'm very glad that your ex-husband didn't get himself killed. Or at least I'm hoping he didn't. But in the meantime, was he going to jail after you got pregnant? <laughs> Um, just to take a step back for a second, he is, he's been deceased within the last two years. And yep, um, after we split up, he went back to the streets and that was a demise of his. And say, when no, he did you say, time, slow yes, down. Um, I was pregnant. Slow down. Well, slow down. I'm sorry. After you two, after, you said you got pregnant after y'all got married. After you became a mother, did he get incarcerated No, again? I, I didn't say that. I apologize. If that's what that I said, what I got said. tongue okay. I did not mean that. We were married, but I was pregnant before us even getting married. Okay, because I asked you, were you pregnant we before married. you got married? I asked you that, so okay, because okay. I asked that. Oh, I'm sorry. I just okay. I- so He did ask that. I thought she was capping for a second. Pasta Tech, stop, bro. <laughs> I, I can tell you love the Floyd, bro. I hate it. I you did, because that's what I was apologize. saying. If you're, having, if you're living a reckless life, you're obviously having reckless sex. So she's like, oh, don't worry about condoms. That just gets in the way. Yes, that's what a condom is supposed to do. It's literally supposed to get in the way. Um, but be that as it may, yeah, we're having reckless sex. We're exposing ourselves to unlimited liability and unlimited exposure to risk, primarily the risk of being attached to this irresponsible gentleman for the rest of our lives. What's and good, hoping that Wait, let me just well, slow down. I'm hosting my program. Hoping that he doesn't take so some fine. sort of reckless risk on his own that comes to your doorstep. Because if you're just hoping that he is competent enough, that when he's out there in the streets doing what he do, that he's competent enough that it doesn't follow him back home. Because if it does, mm-hmm. they want to deal with you, or they want to deal with him and any witnesses. So you're just hoping and praying and crossing your fingers that he's competent enough to be able to live this reckless life in a manner that doesn't become deadly to you. And that's a lot of if and a lot of risk. And now we're having unprotected sex with him and, oh, well, don't worry. We can have kids and stuff because we are just so Bonnie and Clyde on each other. And now the kids are here. And after the kids were born, did he go to prison after that? Yes, my first child after my son was born. How? Hey, yo, what the fuck? So at first she said, and she could she could have just misspoken. She, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. Jason did as well, so I'll I'll follow suit. First she said that they got married first, then had their children. Then she revealed that they were pregnant, then they got married. Okay. Then she just said as well that the child's father went to jail. They got married, had a child, and then the child's father went to jail. Just wanted to point that out if you guys missed it. What I'm going to say, if this is okay, um, he did four and a half years. Hell of a way to start if fatherhood. I, I agree. Uh, can I just interject this real quick? I, the only reason I'm just so pressed to say this is because I truly value what information you give me. I just want to make sure I say the facts plain. So when you're giving me how you feel about it, is you know, based off of you knowing everything. We were engaged and I got pregnant. Irrelevant. We got married. We got married while I was pregnant, just before my son was born. And after we got married, within five months is when he ended up going to do the four and a half years. And we had already been together like maybe three years. Another another chick on her Yeah, ma'am. Another chick on her way to single motherhood. And y'all think a shotgun wedding is going to fix everything, and it doesn't. Eventually, it ends up going wherever it's going to go. They try to hang in there as long as they can, but it's going to end up going the way it goes anyway because your motives for doing it were wrong. A family doesn't start with a pregnant broad and some dude. A family starts with a competent man and a competent woman who have made a bond to each other that isn't dependent on anything else. You start adding stress factors to it, and now you're making decisions under duress. Decisions that you otherwise may not have made. In your case, well, I don't want to have a bastard kid. Problem. 
you're right to not want to have a bastard child. But the problem here isn't having a legitimate child. The problem is having a child with this guy. Doesn't matter if you two have been married for 10 years. This guy is not father material. <laughs> He's not father material. When a man has a child, and I should know because I don't have any, the reason I don't have any is because that would be the single biggest life change imaginable for me, for any man. Your life as you knew it stops. I've spent my life, you know, as adventuring and entrepreneuring and, and, and finance building. That's what I've spent the last four, uh, four decades of my life doing. For the most part, four decades is going on four decades of it. And that's the primary characteristic that's defined my life. I've poured my everything into it. Every waking moment. I poured my everything into it. If I have a child, that is immediately going to stop. I've got a super chat here. <clears throat> Excuse me. My voice is terrible. Salute to, oh, salute to Mikey. I see you, bro. Salute to Mikey. I've said Mikey's name a bunch of times in the chat before. Everybody's like, who's Mikey? This Mikey, man. This Mikey, Mike's Philippine journey. Have y'all seen that dude named Dave? I think he, Dave was in the chat yesterday. Yeah, that's um. That's Dave's homie, and I've been over, my homie as well. I've been over to his channel showing up some love. If you guys are into um, traveling on my passport, guys, Mike's Philippine Journey, obviously, that's what he talks about on his channel. And I think Mike's close to like 20,000 subscribers. So if one of my moderators could drop the link to his channel, yeah, man, if you guys. Where's my money, bitch? Jesus, I got to change that alert. If you guys want to know anything about traveling internationally, specifically the Philippines, I don't know if Mikey might be an expert in, in other. In other areas, I think Mike is like I think Mike is like Filipino or half Filipino or something like that, and um, yeah, the Philippines is his deal, and I think he's either currently I think he bounces back between the Philippines and the states. I could be wrong. He's been in the Philippines full time, but I just like to come over and show Mikey some love from time to time. Appreciate the super chat. Make sure you guys are checking out his content, especially my guys that's big into traveling and passport bros and all that kind of good stuff. Make sure you guys check out his content. Appreciate you, Mikey. That doesn't mean that I stopped being a business owner or an entrepreneur, but that now comes second. It can't come first anymore. This comes second. I learned this with my brothers when they started having kids. I was like, this Negro's a wet blanket now. He ain't no fun to hang out with. No, he's not. He's a father now. Changes when you have your He's not. I mean, no, he's not. He, he's not so much fun to hang out with. I'm talking about all my brothers, but <laughs> when I say he, I'm talking, referring to all of them, but no matter which he, just like, every time it happened, I'm like, hey, you're no fun anymore. Well, no, he's not. No, okay. he's got to wear them Similac and garbage bags and bulk orders from Costco and all this stuff. He, man, look What's here, going? Negro, you ain't got nobody to feed. You, know, got, you ain't got nothing to do on Saturday night, but talk to them people. I got a family and it's true. Once they start going to school, it's, oh, and that's a wrap. It's like, man, you ain't the same person. No, he's not. He's a different guy now. Y'all are, Why? he's not like you anymore. He's not, it's not just him anymore. It used to be you could call him at two in the afternoon, two in the morning. You better not call him now at two in the morning unless something's on fire. <laughs> fire. Literally. <laughs> uh, but that's Why? what it is now. <laughs> like I say, with me, you can call me at two in the afternoon, two in the morning. As the, so my mods will tell you, two in the afternoon, two in the morning, you call me, I'm answering. Well, I mean, I can do that. But for the rest of you, you got kids, eh, you, you can't really do that. Right. And, and being a parent's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. I used to think they were crazy. They said, you know, kids really calm you down. I'm like, this nigga is crazy. <laughs> when he first told me that, he said, you know, kids actually <laughs> calm you down. I'm like, this nigga's lost his mind. What happened to you? But... <laughs> Like I say, I mean, I, I can see what he means. I don't necessarily agree with it 100%, but I see what he means now. And what I'm saying is it makes you a different person. You're a different it person does. now. You are looking at a reproduction, which is why we call it reproducing. You're looking at a reproduction of yourself. That is a miniature copy of you. And the risks that you used to take and the things you used to do, you're now responsible to something greater than yourself. You can't take those risks anymore. 
You can't do that anymore. I've sat here and watched family members and friends tell me the same damn thing over the last 20, 30 years. It reached a point where a lot of them, I wanted them to go into business for themselves. And y'all know me. I can walk you through the process step by step. Most of them wouldn't do it. Because as far as they were concerned, I'm sitting up here saying, okay, we're going to put $100,000 into this. He's like, whoa, that's all my savings. Their tolerance for risk plummeted. Plummets. And not because they were worried about themselves. They were worried about their children. And that's how it should be. Your children should come first. Because so many people don't put their children first. But he's 100% right, man. Once people start having those. That's why I don't think guys should have children. Because you have to. I know cats, man. I joined the military when I was 20. I don't think I turned 21 not too long after. But I knew cats in the military that was 18. I knew a dude who was, I knew a dude when I was in, let me see, I, I was in Korea, but he was, I was older than him, and I was 22, turned 23 when I was there. He was like 20, 20 years old with three kids, bro. Like, guys were making babies at 18 and joining the military at 18 and 19, 19 and 20 with two and three kids, man. Like, once that, you can't, you, you, you turn your responsibility over to your children, as you should. But the reason I don't think a lot of guys, especially younger guys, should be having kids is that the children take priority as they should, but your risk-taking is out the window. And risk-taking is, is a part of life. It's a part of being on your purpose. It's going to involve some risk. And a lot of people are hesitant to take risk, as they should be, because they have children. Just my only observation. And I said this before, my son turned 17 this summer. Next year, my son turns 18, and I'm going back to saying I'm childless. My son's 18. I ain't got no, I ain't got no kid. I got an adult. Bang! Bang! It's good! So let's see. I'll be, what, 41 next year? Be like, oh, oh, Theo, you have any children? No, I'm childless. <laughs> back to the video, man. I'm stupid. Right. And that's, that's what's supposed to happen. And I'm not saying you shouldn't maximize your income, by the way. And I'm still got the issue with that. But I understand even though I don't think it was most advantageous. I think right. the kids have a better life if they had listened. But, you know, people make the decisions that they make. I watch friends who didn't make those, <clears throat> those same decisions, but I understand why they didn't. I just don't think it was in their best interest. Your husband was supposed to say, I'm a father. That comes first. I'm a dad. That comes first. And he didn't do that. He said, let me keep running these streets. Then he gets pinched by the cops. And I'm pretty sure, and you said, did he go to prison as soon as you the child was born or before or how long after? After my son was born, um, he went in about four and a half to five months afterwards. And we had just, my son was born in December. We got married in October. And by June, he was already gone. Okay. Damn, did y'all hear that? So they got married and their child, they had their child six months old and this dude went to prison. Jeez. He was gone for four or five months? He left about four or five months after our son was born. And I was just saying, no, 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 okay, stop, 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 stop. No, 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 stop. You said he left. Oh, what do you mean? No, what do you mean he left? What do you mean by he left? Was he arrested or did he get up and abandon you? That nigga was locked up. What are you talking about he left? He went to prison. He left. Okay, ma'am. He, he went up the road. Okay, ma'am, he was arrested. He, <laughs> he, he didn't leave. He, he He's still there. He's just locked behind. He, he was arrested, ma'am. He was arrested and incarcerated. Black people have so many ter different terminologies to say he got locked up. She's like, he went up the road. Here, here, here in Detroit, we say he, he went up north. Like, come on, man. He got locked up. That's what it How is. How long was he okay, incarcerated? Okay, he was incarcerated. For four and a half years. Thank you. God, right, four damn. or five months. He was incarcerated for four or five years. So the most important formative years of a child's life, he was not there. So they got married. She was pregnant. They got married, had had their child, were in the marriage for six months. Then he goes to jail for four and a half years. No. The age, because... As you all know, if you know linguistics and whatnot, it's easier for a child to say dad, dad than mama simply because of the phonetics of it. And yet I've heard that. from his child being able to talk, his child being able to walk, 
his child being able to make complete sentences, his child being aware that the child has parents. And for the most critical years of a child's life, between zero and five, he was gone. By the time he does show up, he's a stranger. That's the first thing. You had a second child, correct? Yes, we had a daughter. Did he do another prison stint after she was born? No, he did not. Thank okay. goodness. And you said that a couple of years ago, he is now deceased. Uh, did he die of a heart attack or COVID? On the street, right? Oh, lead poisoning. Exactly. No, I said street violence. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> lead poisoning. She didn't get the metaphor. She didn't get the metaphor he was trying to <laughs> Oh, yeah, this dude is dead. I'm going to start saying it. Yeah, if you guys didn't. Yeah, he's passed away as well. So this is it's crazy. Man. Oh, yes. Dang, I like the way you put that, Jason. Yes, it absolutely was lead poisoning. Yeah. Heavy lead poisoning. Yeah. Shout, out, <laughs> shout out Billy Crystal running scared. But, uh. Or was Gregory Hines <laughs> running scared? But uh, you know, Gregory Hines running scared. But yeah, lead poisoning. Um, so yeah, like I say, definitely. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. That's how it ended for him. Here's the issue: that very easily could have been you sitting next to him. It happens to dudes, chicks all the time in that life. Monarch is hilarious. She's sitting there in the car with him, and them fellas like, "Oh, there that nigga is now, bust of you." Exactly. Exactly. That's another thing about the street shit that we ne that never gets talked about is something that Jason just said right now is that forget the fast money, forget all the terrible things that come with dealing drugs and all that kind of shit. Once, there ain't no rules to the street shit. So if I got a problem with you, AD black man, and, and I see you on the street and you don't see me, it's going down. And especially like that's the op. I need to take him out. It's going down. So how many people get killed every motherfucking day? Being at the wrong place at the wrong time, and usually that's or when we're dealing in this realm, you, it's someone who's not in the game, but you're hanging out with somebody who in the game. Your op roll up, and, and this is like some video games. Your op roll up and shoot your car up, and then the girlfriend end up getting killed because you riding around with a fucking drug dealer. And we're going to get him right here. And don't worry about making it home. We're going to get y'all right here at this next light. We've been waiting to get catch up with him for a minute. Facts, repping. We gonna get him and anybody with him. That that very easily could have been you. Hit the like button, y'all. Get the likes up. We got like almost forty people watching for free, or over forty people watching for free. But give me, let me get twenty more likes, y'all. Very easily. The whole time you were with him. How old were your kids when he got? How old was your son when he died? Sixteen. No. Uh. He turned 16 right after. So no, for the, he, for the previous... 16. Yeah, he turned 16 after. So for the previous 16 years from when you were pregnant to when the man got killed, for that whole 16-year stretch, that could have been you. At any time within that 16 years, that could have involved you too. So what I'm saying is that in your case, yeah, that is reckless. For him also as a father, you don't take, he had 15 years to stop. 15. Come on, MMG. <laughs> he got out, he was in the game, got locked up, got out the game, got back in the game, and his curtains. MMG says, and all of the street dudes ain't, MMG, you know you're my guy, but come on, buddy. Come on, man. <laughs> let's, not, let's not do that. I, I know what you're saying, though. <laughs> At some point, a man is supposed to say, you know what? I'm going to, I would do a whole lot better with a job at Walmart than doing what the hell I'm doing. Because when a fella stay out there in the streets, what he's really saying is that he draws some sort of personal satisfaction from doing that. He draws his personal value from it. And eventually that desire mm -hmm. to validate himself in the streets, when he says that that comes first, that's a problem. I agree. It's absolutely about feeling validated. So I agree. 
it, is it okay for me to um, interject something that you were just saying about the job situation with him? Yes. Um, it was good, Juice. When he came home, he did work quite a few jobs, and he wasn't able to get a leg up. So he ended up going to, um, I guess you would call it like a vocational school, and he got a trade welding. And we were from Virginia. And so we heard his job that he received after finishing up his welding. Um, we moved here. And he was working here for a while, but he was always like an underdog because he right. worked with people that had been welding for like 20 years, 30, you know, like they had unions. They were very, you know, pretty much like furniture for the company. So he had to really work hard and work his way up. And that didn't, you know, you hear about welders making so much money that didn't take off for him a particular way. So when we ended up divorcing, he went back to the streets. I just wanted to throw in that he did try to work a little bit, but that's not to deny or, you okay. know, try not to acknowledge anything Here's the thing. he got out. Here's he got the thing, in, okay? so that's right. Here's the thing. I hear what you're saying, ma'am. Black men have had to deal with that union situation since the end of antebellum slavery that's not new it's here it was here before we were all born it's going to be here after we're born you live in a system of white supremacy that's not new so i hear what you're saying but what you're saying isn't some game changer that's just the way it is Make sure you guys just subscribe to michonne as well what's going on man? So we've always had to deal with that I will People say like one other y'all. thing. I will say one other thing here, though. You said you divorced him before he got killed. Yes. Why? Why? Here we go. Um, he told me he was going to get married. To be honest with you, we had already been apart for almost slow two down, years, and I had never slow down. Oh, Wait a second. I asked you why did you divorce him. Your first words were, he he said he was going to get married. What? Yes. Yes, he said he wanted to marry somebody else. So he wanted me to sign those papers. So he, after 15, I don't know how many years it was here. So after he's had all these kids with you. You were right. He he tells you that he (laughs) wants to go spend some more plates. Um, yeah, no. I shouldn't, I shouldn't, I shouldn't use, we, meta- we I shouldn't use separated. metaphors. We were already separated. Well, okay. But, we were already separated. Okay, but, but see, Jason, right. He shouldn't use metaphors with this shit. Cause she, <laughs> <laughs> and she, cause she completely missed the lead poisoning metaphor, which I, I, I heard that saying before. So I automatically knew what he was talking about, but she says that the reason she left him is because he wanted to up and marry someone else. I'm sorry, ma'am. You dropped this. You do realize that we can see you lying, right? That doesn't, that doesn't even sound correct. That doesn't even sound correct. Back but to- why were you separated, ma'am? Oh, we were separated because he wasn't making no money for real. He wasn't like when he was locked up. If I be real with you, like what well, you described no, 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 as no, like, yo, 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 yo. Bang! Bang! it's good. If y'all didn't catch that, man, if y'all didn't catch that. If y'all didn't catch that, if y'all didn't catch that, and again, so let's break it down. Let's break it down. I know everyone came in at different times, so let's try to break this down, and I'll recap it right quick, because we, because, 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 put your seatbelts on, y'all. Turbulence, people. It's about to get real. So, M- Michonne, if you're coming in a little bit late, yeah, this would be a good call for you to react to. So, this young woman is like, she's like in her 30s. She got with a D, with a D boy when she was like 16 or so. They got married. They had one son. When the son is six months old, he goes to jail for four and a half years. And it sounds like she held him down because they obviously still had a family together. So he does four and a half years, come back. They have a then they have a daughter, and then they're still married for another, I don't know, was it six, seven years or something like that? We'll get it correct here in a second. And then after being with him, like I told her, 16 years, she decides to separate from him because he wasn't making enough money. Hey! It's good. And the reason this is really significant is because, as I said, as I stated earlier in the stream, he had a previous caller, Michonne. So if you're watching this, you can pull one or two. I might even react to the other caller as well. But there's another caller before this same woman 
And that was exactly why she was married and left her husband after 22 years. And she tried to make every single excuse in the book as to why she left her husband. She she wanted it not to sound like what it was. And that was that she left because of money. And Jason was talking about it. So many women will leave their husband, even though their husband wasn't high earners in the beginning, because of money. And this woman ultimately did the same thing after holding him down, I'm assuming, for four and a half years while he was in prison. I was so both today okay so. well I, I get that but here's my thing so what you're saying is that after he was out here he was holding jobs and stuff like that but you're saying that he was not producing financially at the level that you would where's liked. my money bitch right and that that led to the two of you separating right i'm not like okay let's let's slow down let's Let's, let's not add on. Okay. I'll start adding on the other things there. And I'm like, okay, you know, that's not a factor. Salute to Ace Skate. He said, I smell, bro, I'm telling you. Access denied. I smell, I smell BS. Me too, bro. Let's be clear, because let's just be very, very honest. If you was out there in them streets and whatnot, you you were you were not a you were not a kitten. Kittens don't get with, with dudes in the street. Wildcats do. It gets even better, y'all. Ain't, ain't no kittens in the streets with drug dealers. <laughs> Why is wildcats out there, so... Uh, yeah, I know you were, uh, he was he was abusing me. Oh, I, I, you don't you, okay? Wildcats talking about they was abused. All right, fine. Um, you know what they say? Yeah, they, they, when he when she in the streets when she body body about that business. But now well, you know I was a little kitten. Man, please come on. Let's not do that. I mean, but, nobody wants to be in a okay. situation like that. Man, but you yes, right. you I mean, did. did you, you literally like married. You literally married it. Yes, you did want to be in it. Yes, you did. You literally married it. Oh my God. You literally yeah. married it. Come on now. You're right. You're right. My point You're right. is. You're right. At that time, absolutely. Okay, but my point is, I would be remiss if I did not point that out. That she said he was not making enough money and that she decided not that his drug dealing was the reason to divorce him. Not going to prison and not seeing his kids. That. That wasn't justifiable means or cause to divorce, to separate. That wasn't the reason. Oh, he ain't making enough money. So let me get this straight. Living that street life and in and out of jail and running off and this. And that wasn't the problem. That no, wasn't no, that's, the problem. That doesn't justify divorcing him. Correct. And the effect it has on the kids. Eh. Meh. Okay. What is? He ain't making enough money. After all these years. And now she wants to be separated. After that. Shouldn't be a surprise. The old boy wants to check out. So you're saying that once you decided that you want to be separated, he said, well, you know what? I'm going to see if I can trade you in for a different one. Now, what was the age difference between the two of you? Seven years. Okay, well, that's not a big age difference. That's not really a huge age difference. That's that's reasonable. And you get, you know, we start getting into double digits. Might be a little bit different, but um, all things remaining equal. When did you when when did you uh, when did you finalize um, when did you finalize the divorce? Um, about two years ago. Okay, you finalized the divorce about three years ago. And two. I'm sorry. Two. You finalized the divorce two years ago. And he's been dead for how long? Two years. He went back home. So you filed for divorce and he went back to the streets. Well, he was already living there. We were separated. When we separated, he went back home. Where's my money, um, We divorced. Right. Everything was done in June. And by right, September, but, he Right, but, away. okay, but here's my thing, though. I would be remiss if I didn't ask. Was he still dealing and doing anything before you separated? No, not that I was aware of. Because of where we live, it's, it's so country like no not that I was aware of. 
So that happened after you wanted to get separated. Him going back into the streets? Yes. When he moved back home? Yes. That's exactly what he did. He went back to the streets. So according to you, you separated from him because he wasn't making enough money. And then right after that, he decides he can make more money in the streets. Yeah, he said when he went back home because of his felony, he wasn't having work options. That's why we ended up moving here because of his felony. They would accept him, but he just wasn't moving up in the company. He wasn't growing. Bang! Bang! It's good! It's cra- It's crazy, man, because she, she doesn't even see... No, y- y'all say, y'all saying she got a y- y'all saying she got a merch, which is funny. That's not even that, that, that's not even it, man. She don't even see the irony of that. She don't even see the irony of what she's saying. She doesn't even recognize it. Salute to Michonne for the ten dollar super sticker, and I think I got it right here if I said it right. And I don't think I did. Okay, let's get back to it. Oh shoot, let me stop before I mess something up. <laughs> before I mess something up, <laughs> I don't think I'm about to mess it up here trying to play drops. My bad. What did I just do? I think I just messed everything up. Okay, let's get back to it, guys. Let me just go back here. Bring that back up. Hello? Yes, ma'am. I'm just listening. I'm just listening. Did I say something wrong or weird? Like, you just got real quiet. She don't get it. She don't, she don't get it, man. She don't get yo, thank you. She don't get it, man. She do not get it, bro. No, ma'am. I mean, you're just relaying the events as they occurred. You're just relaying the events yeah. as they occurred. I'm not gonna say that that was a contributing factor necessarily because I don't know the time frames. I don't know the timelines to be sure. I don't know what his mental or emotional process was. Um I don't know how much of a factor this played in it for him. Once again, to everybody there, as adults, you are responsible for what you do. He had already been locked up before. I'm pretty sure he had already had some scrapes and some close calls before all this happened. I'm pretty sure that occurred. I don't think that the separation helped. I don't think that helped. But as far as how much of a factor that played in it, I can't say. I can't necessarily say. I do know that according to your account of the events, it seems like the gentleman was trying to go legitimate and was running into some headwinds that he may have not necessarily known how to navigate. I agree. I'm just wondering if that's really the time to separate from somebody. Especially if you have no, it's not. It was very selfish of me. It was it was extremely selfish of me. Um, you know, he he picked us up, moved us. He he believed in himself. It didn't happen how it should have happened, or how he would have expected it rather to happen. Everything happens how it's supposed to, based off of what you put out. And let me clear up one other thing as well, because yeah, if you haven't been listening for the entire call, it, it can't be a bit confusing. So what I made out of it was this: they're from VA, they're from Virginia. And that's where they were from originally when he was in the streets. And I believe once he got out of prison, that's when they moved over to Des Moines. After he did his four and a half year bid, came back home, got her pregnant again. They had a daughter. Then they moved from VA over to Iowa. Iowa is where he was trying to go legit. He was working and she's about to get into that here in a second. He was working. I think well, I think he was a welder. So he was working, you know, coming up the straight path but he wasn't making his enough money or moving as fastly as she thought he should he should do. Therefore, she divorces him. He moves back to VA and that's where he end up and he gets back in the street and that's where he end up getting killed at. Again, I'm not trying to blame this woman for that man's actions. But you held him down for a four and a half year prison sentence. Everything was good. Like Jason said it earlier, you had no problem being with him when he was a drug dealer, you had no problem being with him when he was in the streets, but you finally, the, the straw that broke the camel's back was he wasn't making enough money, man. And this, and like I said, it's, it's so powerful, man, because he had another call just like this. Different scenario, but ultimately the same results, man. It's un, it's, it's it's crazy. So I know what people like you saying, I think she got a murk. No, I don't, I don't think that's it as well. He went back to his, 
to his home state and start, you know, moving that work and end up getting, you know, y'all know how to, y'all know how that shit play out. So, salute to Miss McCray. She said, my husband's friend went to federal prison, got his stuff together when he got out. And now he makes high six figures. He works domestically and international. And I know we've had some people that's um, said that they've done, that they've done a little time in the chat before. You know, it is what it is. I don't, I'm not one of those people who look down on people. If you try to come out and be, uh, you know, make a better version of yourself. I don't think the the prison systems encourages that whatsoever. I, I, it's not built to recoup, to have people recuperate, become better versions of themselves. It's built to have, to bring your ass back in there. But at the same time, you have to make, you know, you have to make your choices to become a better person. So I don't believe it's impossible. Let's get back to it. And it was very selfish of me to not be patient with him, to not try right, to good. continue to deal with him. I fully acknowledge that. It's definitely not the time to try to separate with somebody. Well, like I say, definitely, um, I'm choosing my words carefully, everyone, because this, this is a, I, I consider this to be a sensitive, pertinent matter. And I'm sorry, I just had AD Blackman said, I blame her so you don't have to. No, it's cool. Let's go, who AD. The reason I say I don't blame her is because, don't get it twisted, she was fucked up in that scenario. She, the horrible person, horrible, horrible person. It already tells you what type of individual you're dealing with. But I, I the reason I say I don't blame her is because he chose to go back to VA. He could have stayed in Iowa. He chose to go back to VA, and he chose to get it in the streets. That's the only reason I said, yes, her situation damn near for me. He could have went back to VA and got a fucking job, bro. That's the only, that's why I say I don't blame her because I'm all about accountability, and no one put a gun to his head and made him go back to the streets, even though he tried it on a straight and narrow, but I totally get where you guys are coming from. Um, but certainly, I, I hope this is a lesson for other people in that regard. You know, when folks feel pressured they may feel inclined to take more risks. They may feel inclined to take more risks. And life is short. Life is short. And if we allow ourselves to be selfish individuals, just remember we attract to ourselves people like ourselves. If y'all want to know the real reason why I give people so much time on the phone and I talk to them at length and things like that when this kind of thing comes up is because I hope that's generosity and I hope that's I hope that's the kind of world I'm creating is a world of more generous people. But selfishness does never turns out well. It never turns out well because it can't. It makes them a vampire of other people and then eventually they run out of people up, to, to vampire on. They run out of that. Next thing you know, you start seeing the artifacts of that show up in your kids. If they've been selfish with the kids and they may not even recognize they are, but the kids are like, yeah. So definitely, um, I'm not sure exactly how much of a factor that played in it. I'm certain it played a factor based on the way you're relaying the events to me. Right. I'm just taking your word for it. You might, you might not be remembering it correctly, but um, based on the way in which you're relaying the events, uh, definitely, I don't think it was a helpful factor at all. He is certainly responsible for his decisions. Men get divorced every day and don't say, let me go back to the streets. Because to anybody here who may wish to lay the blame on her and certainly, technically speaking, I'm supposing, I suppose morally, there is a bit of responsibility there. But I return to you one more time. This man is a father first. Oh, also for you guys. Oh, it ain't over. I said it earlier in the beginning. Grab your seatbelts. Turbulence, people. Oh, this ain't over. And he has a responsibility to his children. And if the woman that he is with is unworthy of his sacrifices, that does not excuse him from his responsibilities to his children. Those are two separate sets of responsibilities. If this broad don't never come back. <laughs> then you still have a responsibility to that son and that daughter. You are not responsible to them because of this woman. You are responsible to them in spite of this woman. Don't matter what's going on with her. 
Well, she say I ain't making enough money. Um, well, then you know what? If she want to bounce out, let me let that let Interstate 20 wrap your ass. <laughs> but my responsibility is to my children. And that's the perspective that a man needs to have. Women, women, uh, I, I, like I say, it's for fellas today, like I say, if you want to get married, that's a great, that's a wonderful thing. You got to make sure the chick you with is solid. He wasn't living solid like that. I, I understand. But the bottom line is no matter what, no matter what. No, I didn't think it was funny either, but yeah, I didn't think it. No was- matter what. He's got a responsibility. Oh, did I laugh just, when you were he's saying got a responsibility. let the interstate wrap your ass? Say less. I'm sorry. I thought that was funny. I'm sure. I'm sure you did. Yeah, this is what I started thinking. I'm sure you did. This is what I started thinking she didn't have it but all up there. Understand something, and I, I thank you for being, for having candor and being candid. So I definitely thank you for that. But please understand, it's not a laughing matter. And the reason why it isn't oh, is because, right. and the reason why it isn't, so it's all my I'm child not trying God. to pile on you here, but the reason why it isn't is because the story that you've given has really resonated with people. That it seems like you finally have a, you have a Where's fellow here who's trying bitch? to do the right thing, but he didn't have the right woman. My apologies. We got a super chat I need to grab here. Yeah, man, this is, this is sad, man. Yeah, this, the giggling, man. She got to she got to stop that shit. She, she after listening to this, and I listened to this entire call twice, twice. I spent hours listening to this shit yesterday. But I do. I'm smart now. I don't sit back here. I do multiple shit while I'm doing that. I usually just sit back here, and listen to the stream. Like no, no, go for a walk, <laughs> go do some other shit while I'm listening to it. But anyway, salute to. Yeah, my, my point for bringing that up is that I don't think. I've had I've had women say this before, and I tend I tend not to believe it because I just think it's women capable for other women. But I've had a lot of women multiple times tell me that when it comes to like these conversations, like when women be giggling and shit at inappropriate moments, they always say, "Well, it's a nervous thing." Part of me wants to say, "Stop the cap," but I'm also like, "All right, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt." And going from this call, because I don't think this woman was terrible, I'm giving her the benefit of the doubt. Maybe I should. That I just think she was just kind of nervous, but that shit was definitely inappropriate. Salute to the quad storm. You say signal that she thinks this shit is funny. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. but this lady's got issues, man. We're we going to get to it because it's, it's still more. Appreciate you, bro. And ultimately, his inability, at least judging by your version of the events, his inability to reconcile right. that and deal with that may have been a contributing factor in other decisions <laughs> that he made. That's the issue. But I agree with you on that. But it's not about agreeing. I agree with you on that. It's not about agreeing with us here. I'm saying, like, I don't find this to be a laughing matter. I'm agreeing with you on that. I laughed at a particular thing. And telling telling her her that if she gets butt burns getting drugged down Interstate 20, it's an outrageous statement. But let us please be clear. It's a very serious one. Because that's literally the position that he would have had to take. And what I'm saying is it doesn't sound like he was able to do that. He needed to be able to do that, but it doesn't sound like he was able to. Your objection about his income apparently resonated with him far more than you give it. You gave it credit for at the time. And I give everyone credit and leeway and opportunity to learn and to grow as a person. But what I do not like is the fact that we've created a society that says that women are allowed to be ruthless with the men. I do not like a society that says that because what I'm saying is that you whispered something before and I'm very glad that you did that because I want this to be a teaching moment. Okay. This is a teaching moment. When you say that this man was abusive to you, and that's what you said. <laughs> you said that he, oh, among other things, he was being abusive. Got it. I heard that. This man was married to a woman who filed for separation because he didn't make enough money. Not because he wasn't trying, not because he wasn't out there. She filed for separation because he didn't make enough money. Oh, I'm not going to be nice to her here in a second. Y'all got to wait. It's still more. 
I want to ask all of you listening to me right now, would that qualify as abuse? Facts. To everyone within the sound of my voice right now, especially the women out there that we have coddled and enabled and we have fed them to bring out the worst in them. We've now distilled the females in our society down to such a narcissistic point that it's now brought out the absolute venomous worst. Think about that for a few moments. There are some folks in the chat room saying that no, that's not abusive. You know, I'm going to put that in a poll. I'll so I want you to think about that, by the way. So the question he asked, if you guys missed it, because I think I kind of paused it right right when he was saying it, so I'm, I, I possibly messed it up. But he was saying, if women can say so many things are abuse, can't men say that a woman leaving her marriage or trying to break up their family because of finances, isn't that technically abuse? And that's what he asked the audience. And I'm going to ask the audience right now. Maybe they mean it the other way around. But think about that for a few moments. He's gotten married to her. He's got two children with her. He's taking on his financial responsibilities to the best of his abilities. And this woman is telling him, yeah, I want to tear the family apart and dispose of it because eh, you, you don't make as much money as you were making in them streets. Is that abusive? Is that abusive to have a man trapped and handcuffed in that situation? Okay, more the salute. power of the state is going to come down on him. Okay, more salute. Appreciate you. He's already been through the meat grinder with that, with the prisons and whatnot. He sees what the state can do. Now, under his own roof, the woman that he married and had children with, she is now telling him that she is going to bring the power of the state in his home. Not because he was doing nothing, but because, in her opinion, he wasn't doing enough, fast enough. There are some fellas in here talking about that's not abusive. You know, listen, there's a guys in here talking about that's not abusive. 90 seconds. Some chick named Lori talking about that's not abusive. I, I hope you I hope no man ever marries you. I hope no man ever marries you and puts his physical and financial future in your hands. I hope that no man is ever foolish enough to hand you that kind of power. I hope no man is foolish enough to put his faith and, and to put where his future and to entrust it to someone like you. Because fellas, just listen, she means that. She means that. That you can be trying as hard as you want to here and, oh, well, I don't think that's abusive. Fellas, if a woman doesn't think that's abusive, she literally thinks that nothing is abusive. She thinks that marriage is an institution where a woman has a privilege to abuse any man because the state, in her eyes, marriage is a tool of the state that allows you to abuse men. <clears throat> but you've got screwed up daddy issues. And in her eyes, marriage is a, is a institutional means of the state that allows you to go around and become the sadist you've always wanted to be. Ten seconds. To be as sadistic as you've always wanted to be. Yo, Styles Point, bro. Bang! Bang! It's good! That's what that was? I was wondering what the fuck that was. That's what that is? Damn, who's called for prison? So some homie SP, man. Let's get back to it, bro. Towards the men. So whatever you feel like your daddy did to you, well, now, marriage, that's what marriage is for. Marriage is so you can... Abuse somebody. No, uh, SP said that's that third, that 90 seconds, that 60 seconds. I'm picking up what you're putting down, SP. That's what he's talking about, the prison thing. So I just want you all to understand that Raise as men, I always encourage men to operate at a high level. But I also understand the system that we live in. I understand the system that we live in. And there are some people who are going to struggle to deal with that. And they need encouragement. When I, for a fellow who ain't trying, 
I don't, he doesn't need to encourage me. He needs to kick in the ass. But for someone who is and is trying to figure it out and most likely wasn't getting any support from his family or otherwise because they don't know what to do with it. And then you got the system talking about when he has a felony. That's strange. I've met many white. I'm from Louisiana. I've met a bunch of white men who were welders and felony <laughs> drug convictions. That never was an issue for them. But I also understand when you're black. I also understand when you're black, it goes differently. There are certain places where that's a real problem. And what I'm saying is that in that cert- circumstance, whatnot, you really had an opportunity, I think, to step up in that regard for nothing more than your children. Because here's the issue. My bad. I just got to acknowledge this. That was when it says, bro, I've been inside before. So, yeah, I know what that voice is. No, it's just, that's why I rock with you, SP. SP has been rocking with my channel since I had 100 subscribers. But that's why I rock with you, bro. Because I heard that shit yesterday. I was like, what the fuck is that? What is that? Only for SP to pop in and say, yo, somebody calling from prison. I knew exactly what you was talking about, bro. Me and you here. That's why I rock with you. Listen to Quiet Storm. He's giving you some game right now in the chat. How old are you now? I did not know what that sound was. I'm 36 now. You're 36 now with two kids. Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> I'm 36 now with three children. I had a, a child um, our second year being separated. Bang! Bang! It's good! Ladies and gentlemen, we have a third baby in the mix by another man. Let's go! <laughs> Hit the goddamn like button. We cooking this morning. Okay, you're saying that you had a third child with him after you were separated? No, she has a separate father. Okay, we've been engaging in some more unprotected sex with somebody new. <laughs> Yeah, it was my first relationship since um, separating from my husband. And are you still in a relationship with this man now? No. So let me get this straight, just so I make sure I'm not misconstruing the events. You had two children with the neighborhood drug dealer, who eventually, (laughs) eventually got you... (laughs) separated from him because he stopped dealing drugs and wasn't making as much money. And you felt like, well, this is lame. So that was cause to get separation and say, Hey kids, we're doing something different. And then after that, she, cause this would be within the last what, year or two. Yeah, that's correct. So in your mid thirties, you said, let's go back and have another child. And once again, well, marriage isn't a requisite. That marriage is not required. Is that correct? I was just kind of reflecting on that. It's not that marriage isn't required, but I'm not clearly. requiring it. I'm not even clearly, looking for it right Clearly, now. marriage is not required. Clearly, it isn't. Okay, it's not required. Thank you. Thank you. Don't clearly, try to fight it's it. not, because if it were, you'd be married, and at least the man would have made a commitment to you before there's some form of duress or something else involved. So, very clearly, you don't require a man to marry you. And what I'm saying is, by the way, Think about the example that this sets for your children. And let me let me stop it real quick, and I promise I'm going to get right back to it. I just had to say something on this point. Jason talked about this, and I brought this up because I have a cousin. I've used my cousin multiple times on this channel. For example, if she ever heard it, she'd probably be pissed. But this woman is already her, – her, her, she got her two children. Her first husband gone, divorced. She's passed away. She moved on. But she's in her mid-30s. I've talked about this before on the channel. Women who already are in this position who purposely go out and have more children and they're not even, you can't even use I'm young excuse because this woman is like 35 years old when she did it. Purposely go out and make more children. And we're not even going to talk about the caliber of the man she had her child with. That's going to get brought up in a second. But I said the same thing about my cousin. If you guys didn't miss it, I'll give it a quick rundown again. My cousin had her child the same time that she was pregnant with her child, the same time my ex-wife was pregnant with our son. The difference is I was in the military. We were married. She was single mom. She decided to have her son, and her son's the same age as my son now. 
spot. Where's my money, bitch? She waits after having her son. She waits ten years to have, and the guy she had her first son with had already had like maybe two or three kids by two or three women. Then he's had more since then. But she would wait ten years, only had that one child, and then in her mid thirties, she would have two more children by another man, a man who already had. He gave, she gave him, she gave him babies eleven and twelve. And he already had like he already had ten children by nine different women. So she became baby mama number ten, purposely in her mid thirties, and that's what irritates me more than anything. These are grown ass women who can't use that "I was young" excuse. If you already made your bed, and it's a bed that you don't even want to lay in, by having two children by a drug dealer, D boy, that you divorce and end up getting murked, you purposely lay down and had another baby with a dude. Why at at thirty five years old? Salute to the homie Derek Gay. She says she got more layers than onion. Facts. I seen somebody say Lifetime mo movie. Absolutely, Derek. This is it's it's too much, man. And we haven't even got to the end of it, bro. Let's get back to it. For your son, I agree. For your son I in agree. particular, think about what this teaches your son. Exactly, Bruce. That it is okay because he's gonna look for a woman like his mother, because this is what he's grown up around. So this isn't shocking for him anymore. Yeah, we might have to he's gonna grow up. He's now growing up thinking that. Getting chicks pregnant is what you do. Hell, I watched my mama get pregnant after I was 18. So she was doing it while he was growing up and didn't stop. And there's a reason why I bring this up. I bring this up because the man that you got pregnant by this last time here, where is he? Um, He lives in Arkansas now. He and, was living here, but he moved back to Arkansas. Okay, and remind us again where here is. I live in Iowa now. I'm from Virginia. You are. I moved a, to Iowa. You are a long ways away from Arkansas. Yes, a very long way. How did it? So basically, that was how a nice the, way of okay, saying he doesn't want to be around. How did a chick in Iowa get pregnant by a guy from Arkansas? He was living here. Clearly, he didn't have deep roots there. Nope. How many other children does he have? Um, two others. By how many different females? Two others. Bang! Bang! It's good! Man, uh... This is Haram. Abdul, get the rocks. Bro, man. Do y'all hear this shit? Do better squad. Do y'all hear this shit? <laughs> Bro, do y'all hear this shit? Somebody said it earlier, man. And this was the point of this video. Somebody said it earlier in the chat. I wish I could bring it back up right now. She hitting the, the play, every check on the baby mama playbook. Every single check, man. And I will never get past these women who are in their mid to late 30s who purposely go out here and make another goddamn baby with these random ass people, man. When you're almost 40. I realized that it was not going to work out with my ex-wife. And I said, well, you know what, Theo? You can't, you, you, you're you not having any more children. Even though I'll be honest with you, I never really wanted kids like that when I was younger. And it wasn't What's until now when I got closer, when I'm getting closer to 40s. Now I want children. Now I, you know, now I want children, but if I don't have them, if I don't get married again, I'm not going to have any more because I'll be damned at 40 and over that I'm going to have some baby mama drama. Bro. Oh, it, it infuriates me, man. Where's my money, me. bitch? Grab, what's going on, Jay Will? I see you. Let me grab these super chats here. Oh, salute to the homie Softy Balls. Bro, bro I got you, man. <laughs> Our show sponsor. Now. I have the money, y'all. There's poor people around. <laughs> With your broke ass. <laughs> For the 50, bro. I throw everything at you, bro. Look at your cash. Look at your cash. Bubbly. Look at your cash. Bubbly. Let's see. What Salty Balls got to say, man? He says, uh, find one Lizzo of coinage. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny, man. Find one Lizzo of coinage from Chest of Treasure. Rain of Down from the Atheist on behalf of Machismo TV. I got you, bro. <laughs> Make sure you guys check out uh, Machismo, uh, Machismo TV as well. Dude, always be live, bro. We live all the time. And I'm always sitting here working on this channel, bro. So no doubt, man. Appreciate you, man. You're our show sponsor. 
Salty Balls, and I'm going to add you to the scroll here momentarily. Just give me one sec here. This chick is done. Yo, yo. Yo, yo, thanks, bro. I literally had to put on my shoes and walk around the block. I got you, Salty Balls. I'm going to update you here in a sec. Bro, it's... Salute to the homie Mel Brown. He says, man, I feel sorry for the single brothers today. This is what they had to pick for. I'm telling you, bro. Bang! Bang! It's good! Like, come on, man. Come on. And she's going to... And Jason's going to ask her the obvious question. Why? I appreciate all the super chats, guys. Why would you do that? And the answer she tells is just... It's just ridiculous, man. It's just ridiculous, but it's sad. My oldest son has no has no other children because our thirty because oh has no other children be, besides our thirty six year son. My ex husband had twins with his wife and three we had together. Yeah, facts, man. Like this is this is crazy, or this is crazy, man. Yeah, my and my siblings, my siblings are all both married. I have two siblings. They're both married with kids. I'm the I'm the I'm the one that's divorced, and I just got one. But yeah, let's get back to it, man. Let's get back to it. And what about him was so attractive that you demanded Where's to be baby money, mama bitch? number three after your own decade and a half experience? What was it about this man that was so irresistible that you said, I have to get pregnant by him by all means? This is uh, the million dollar question. Physical features and a way of life. Physical features. How much access? How much is. access do you have to those physical features now? Facts. Zero. <laughs> when's the last time? Zero. You, when's the last time you saw him? Actually, maybe a little while ago, our daughter was born. So, um, she'll be two in February. So I want to say it's been about maybe nine months since I've seen him almost ten months. When did he go back to Arkansas? Um, when I found out about it, it was within the last two months. So honestly, I don't know for sure. We have stopped communicating fully. You had stopped communicating. Why? Yes. Yeah. Um, we argue a lot. We don't have productive conversations. Um, and, so what do you, and what do you and what do you argue about? I argue about Tom and him just being a part of our daughter's life. He argues about wanting to be in a relationship with me. He was good enough to get pregnant by, but he's not good enough to have a relationship with. How does that work? Um. He used to live like a street life or whatever, but he had got himself huh. together. But he he was working a job where he was making great money or whatever. He didn't want to stick with that. So instead of the encouragement that I should have been giving my husband or whatever, I was actually encouraging him consistently, feeding him consistently. Like as far as, you know, you could do this, just kind of push Where's through it. Like money, in a different position. You know, don't give up on yourself. Wake up every day. I, all the stuff I probably should have been doing from, not probably, the things I should have been doing for my husband. But that's, he didn't want to be on the straight in that wrong. He didn't want it at all. Oh, man, you. Hey, yo, what the fuck? Oh, you can't make this shit up, people. You cannot make this up, bro. You cannot make this up. So, she's saying that the second dude that she had a kid with, he didn't, he was he was also a street dude, but he didn't want to be on the straight and narrow. So all she does was spend all his time, her time allegedly, encouraging this dude to get on the straight and narrow. And she's like, well, this is all the energy I should have been giving my husband. This hey, yo, what the fuck? This Where's my money, bitch? Grab these super chats, man. This is getting ridiculous. Salty Balls, I got you updated down here at the bottom of the screen. He's our new show sponsor. Salute to the homie Derek Gaines. He said he, he made a point. I was attracted to... I was attracted to women that was like my mom. Big mistake on my part. I would never do that again. Facts, man. That happens a lot. A lot with uh, guys um, of Derek as well. Let's see. Salute to you. Appreciate the super chat. Salute to Cincinnati. Boo Cleveland. Because that's what Derek will say. Let's see. Salute to Saucy Fighter Biker. What you got, uh, SFB? Can't make this shit up. It's real. That's what I'm saying, bro. You can't make this up. You can't write. This, this is not a script that you would sit back and conjure up. Not even the best Hollywood writers could come up with, with this audacity, man. The nerve, man, man, ma'am, ma'am. Who do you think you are? Oh, <sighs> money. I don't even think it's money, though. I don't even think it's money, though, Coop, because, I mean, I don't know. It could be a part of it as well. 
But it's just salute to the squad. Salute to you, Ray. General, I salute you. Day one subscriber as well. Styles.973 as well as the Raging Half Asian. These guys have been here way before we was at 1,000 subscribers. Salute to you, Raging, out there in West Coast and Portland, man. Let's get back to it, guys. I'm enraged. I'm enraged. Let's get back to it. And so okay, but, line, but that didn't life. take you. Okay, but the problem is you two were involved for three or four years, so these are all things you figured out no, in a relatively short. No, it's not these, a shame. It wasn't okay, what I'm saying years. is that these are things that you figured out in a relatively short amount of time. So there wasn't anything that you learned before you got pregnant by him that you were not deathly aware of before. Correct. Correct. Oh, well, how did Paul doing? There's my issue with it. By the way, how old is this gentleman now? Uh, we're the same age. He's 36, I so. Okay. And now, he's got you tied up for the next 18 years. Facts. <laughs> Facts, AD. So now he's got you tied yeah. up for the next 18 years. Yes. So until you're 54. Yep. That's correct. And he's made no commitment to you of any kind. None. And I didn't require it. That is correct. I think you're a prime candidate to get your tubes tied. And I'm not going to tell you to break <laughs> up with somebody, but I do think you are a prime candidate to get your tubes tied. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, man. Salute to the quiet storm. He says you, you don't you don't have productive conversations with him. Where's has, my money, bitch? But he has productive enough to consume his seed. Yeah, but he was productive enough to consume his seed. Fact. Send an asteroid immediately. Facts, man. What are what are we doing here, man? What are we doing here? Appreciate you, Quiet Storm. Let's see. Let me see if I have any more. So... Facts, Daddy. I, I will say that I don't tell people break up their relationships, but yeah, you in your case it might be a prime candidate to have your tubes tied because we're we're not making I don't think we're making wise use of our reproductive organs. Um, so in order for that you may continue to engage in frivolous and reckless sex without necessarily causing, you know, a cata catastrophic failure. Um, I think that would be that may be a good idea here because you're just getting pregnant willy nilly by any old body who comes along and it's going to be impossible for you to develop any type of self respect for yourself. But worse, it's going to be impossible for your children to develop any respect for you when they're watching you operate way more recklessly than any of them. Because your son and your daughter are looking at you saying, wow, I would never have made a decision like that. What is up with mom? And this color covers your, this colors your son because his father is no longer here. And if he's aware of the events as we are, he may be rather hostile toward you. And that hostility will find its way to other women. I have a question about that. Um, do you feel like that hostility, if, if there is any there, um, can be like hidden? Because I worry about that. I, I put my it's not so much the, the therapy. No, it they is not so much long, this hidden. But it isn't so much that it is hidden. It is that the way that you are looking for it to be expressed will not be so obvious. It's not like his eyes are going to turn green whenever something like that happens. He won't know until he gets out into the real world and starts operating himself. You see, the problem with being a child or an adolescent is you're pretty much cocooned. When you get into high school and things like that, you start dealing with girls. When he becomes 18, which he should be about now, and now he's dealing with them independently, he's now going to start dealing not with girls who are put in a classroom with him, placed there by a school administrator. He is now going to start dealing with and talking to the females he chooses. Females that he has chosen. He's chosen to make connections to them. And there won't be anyone to control his emotions when he does. So we're going to find out 
My short answer to you is we're going to find out how much this has affected him. When he's got to deal with her one-on-one and when she disappoints him. When she does something to disappoint him, then we're going to find out how much this has affected him. I hope, I can only hope it is not catastrophic. I certainly hope it is not. But we won't know for certain until he starts dealing with a female one-on-one and then see how he deals with adversity from a female. And whether or not it's something that's limited or whether or not he says you're all like this. More importantly, you're worried about the son. I'm worried about the daughter. Well, I'm worried about all three. Okay. Uh, You're worrying about the son. That's why I asked about him. You're worrying about the son. I'm worried about the daughter. Because the daughter is the one who will follow your example. Your son can't really follow your example. He can just be a weak copy of it. Your daughter can follow your footsteps inch for inch. That's the thing I'm concerned about. And for them to see this happening where mama's blowing up pregnant and there isn't a stable masculine figure in the home taking responsibility for these children, taking responsibility for them is just dudes come by and lay up. And by the way, I'm not stupid nor deceived. Hopefully your children are not listening right now, but let's just lay it on the line. This is the guy you got pregnant by. But this is not the only man that you slept with in the last two years. This is just the one you got pregnant by. And when the kids see this kind of thing, and this becomes a regular thing, particularly where girls are concerned, when you've got this free-floating, hedonistic, look it up, (laughs) loose-wicked sexual environment... I'm always proud of myself when JB says, look it up, and I already know the definition of the word. Project Leroy says, JB don't miss. Facts, bro. And did you notice what he just said a second ago? This is the guy you got pregnant with. He's not the only guy you slept with in the last two years. And then it got so quiet, you could hear um, a mouse pissing on cotton, bro. She didn't say a word, which means it's true. (laughs) The daughters are observing this and saying, this is how you do it. Because it doesn't take any training to do that. So I'm, everybody's, we talking about the sons. I'm concerned about the daughter. Now we got two of them, I believe. I'm concerned about them. I'm concerned about them. So you're probably the first woman I've ever said this to during a program. But yeah, in your case, for your own good, I would recommend that you investigate uh, getting your tubes tied. And maybe if you find the right guy or something who actually will marry you first, you can do that. But all this getting, all this slop pregnancy and getting pregnant all sloppy and crazy, it's just like, that's a sign of an emotional disturbance. That's, that's not motherhood. This, you, this is not a loving union that's creating children. There's some folks just sitting out here getting it in. And one person in particular who's determined to keep getting pregnant under bad circumstances. Because here's the thing. You divorced your first husband because he wasn't making enough money. Yep. You didn't make any financial requirement of this guy whatsoever. No, I didn't. So, I mean, you're going backwards. My apologies. I had to cash app to acknowledge. Mark from Tennessee says, for for this goddamn bitch to be tarted. I don't even remember saying that. Salute to you, Mark. I likely did say that. At the time, I felt like I was eager to prove, like, um, that your ovaries still work. Like, me and my children, we. You were eager to prove that your ovaries still worked? Here's where we're going to get into it. Why did you have this baby? Why did you have this baby? And her reasoning for it is just. Zed, uh, Zeddy was like, I don't know how you listened to this twice, but I was cool with it. This part at the end is where I was like. When she explained her reasoning why, because that's the thing about me, man. I like to understand why. Let's get to the let's get to the core of the issue. Why do people operate a certain way? And before we do, I just want to look at the poll here. I, I didn't get a chance to look at it. I only got a chance to look at it momentarily. I left a poll question up here. If a woman leaves her marriage 
solely for financial reasons, is that abuse? We got 107 votes. 72% says yes. 28% says no. Huh. Okay. I thought that would be a lot. I thought it would be a lot more. I didn't think it would be nearly 30%, but that's cool. I just wanted, yeah, okay, that, that poll. I don't know what you guys think about that poll, man. But, yeah, let's get back to it. I, this is what I'm here for. I want to hear why would she choose to have a baby. After all this drama, why would she purposely choose in her 30s to have a baby with this dude? Let's hear it. <laughs> no, they said I was eager to prove that I can handle my own. Like, I, I felt like I was doing a lot. I was working two jobs, making great money. Okay, so how does so how does having a baby figure? How does having yet another child figure into handling my own? How is that a benefit? How is having another child a benefit? How? Um, outside of the emotional part, it's not a benefit. You know that. I know that. Okay, but I'm saying is that I asked you why did you do that, and you said, "Well, I wanted to prove like I was out here handling it on my own." What, What was handling it on your own for having another child? I was I was in my ego. I was trying to place like I do whatever on my own. You know what I mean? And I so can, by I doing can, that, I didn't put don't out any nobody, requirements. Don't uh, nobody tell me what to do. I can do whatever I feel like. Okay. Yeah. But did y'all hear that? No offense, but that is the very definition of narcissism. That right, that's textbook definition of it. And it's one thing if you're narcissistic by yourself. That's one thing. But it's another thing when you've got other people around you. Now, that's where it becomes a problem. And the chat room says she's a boss babe. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that's, that's boss babeism. It sure is. And that's exactly what it is. Because I know she didn't do her best describing it. But what she pretty much said, why did you have this baby? Because I was trying to prove to myself that I could do it alone. I was trying to hype myself up. What the fuck are you talking about? What the fuck are you talking about? You have two children by a goddamn drug dealer who was trying to get his shit together, but because he wasn't making enough money legitimately, you divorced him. He moves back home and gets murdered, which I'm not putting that on on her. She didn't make that man. That's where I differ from some of you guys. She didn't make that man go back to the streets. She didn't put him in a great position to help. She might have pushed him along the way, but money, she didn't bitch? make him. But this woman just said that at 30 something years old with two children, one of them was like damn near 18 at the time, she decided to have another baby with a dude to prove to herself, to prove that she was in the, that she can do it all by herself. Why you stupid bitch? And one other thing I have to say as well, she missed me with the, I had two jobs and I was making great money. Yo. Stop the cap. Get the fuck out of here. If you have to work two jobs, you're not making enough money in the first one you done. Bang! Fuck. Bang! It's good. I hate when people do that shit. I'm working through, I'm getting this money. I'm out here doing this. It's one thing if you're a single person with no children and you're just a hustler. You're just somebody who just got to keep going. I've met a few people like that who just, they all about the money. That's they, Hustle is their thing. But if you're working two or three jobs, bitches, because you got to stop the cap. Stop the cap. Get the fuck out of here. You know what? Theo Cooper's not buying that bullshit. Maybe someone else will. But Commander Coop, not so much. Let's get it, man. Let me grab this damn super chat. That's stupid ass shit, man. It's fucking stupid, man. It's fucking stupid. People, I don't care. I've said this before. I told this shit to my ex-wife, man. Before we got divorced, I said this shit. I've said it on my channel. I'll say it again. I we used to joke, me and my ex-wife, before we got divorced, like, you know, if we ever get divorced, right? You it was a joke amongst us, you're gonna have another baby before I did. And she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course that came true. I don't have any more children. She had a baby with another dude. And I said all that to say this. I said to her when we were going through our divorce and all that kind of shit, I don't give a damn who you who you screw. Go fuck whoever. Even though one of the reasons why I got with my ex-wife because she wasn't a promiscuous 304. So I'm like, get, whatever, get with whoever you want to get with. Just don't be having babies, my motherfuckers, because y'all, because her problem was she sucked at birth control. So many women suck at birth control. Different story for a different day. But God damn, man, people just bringing in these random, reckless fucking babies, man. Stop fucking. I don't even say, y'all need to stop fucking. I'm not telling you stop fucking. But if y'all just make babies out of shit, put your dick away. I think she was lonely. She was looking for love. Yeah, Derek. That's a great, that's a good observation, man. That's a good observation, man. That's a good, I just think she fucking stupid, man. But I also think that's fair, Derek. But I I think also think it's it's the social media. It said, I'm a boss, babe. You ain't a boss of shit. I have to I have to prove who are you trying to prove this to? 
yourself that you can that you can it's just stupid i'm not wasting more brain cells let's get back to it i refuse i refuse let's get back to it bro that's it right there <clears throat> that was that I'm, was my thinking at that time i'm a boss babe and what are you the boss of my ovaries I'm telling and you, it would be different if she was boss babe and ovaries on a fellow who was about something. She's boss babing over bums. Right after saying that she divorced her first husband because he wasn't making enough. So, like I say, um, stupid, Larry. Stupid. Definitely, uh, the only <laughs> suggestion I would make tonight would be that one in particular, so that the cycle stops. You're not missing anything. Your children would definitely be better off with that. You're 36 years old. You're now a mom all over again. You are now going to be raising small children basically through the remainder of your reproductive years and on into your later years. That's what you're looking at. And now you're asking a man to come into this situation. Or going forward, you'd be expecting them to come into this situation. A woman over the age of 40 with three kids, even if your son moves out, two kids, and even if the daughter becomes an emancipated juvenile, cross your fingers, there's still one small one there who is going to be small for the next decade. And so from 36 to 46, we have a small kid in the house. And any man who wants to deal with you, that's what he's walking into. I said that because I was saying before, if you divorced your husband because he didn't make enough money, what do you think your, since that was your strategy, what do you think are going to be your odds of replacing him? Um, honestly, I feel like I can't. You know, I've recognized that more and more since we've been apart. The, the the type of person that he was, he was so genuine. And I can't. So I've just decided to date myself right now, I suppose, because I, I, I'm trying to fix who I am as a person. Um, I don't know if I'm ever going to get my, you know, knight in armor or whatever. I hope to. But I'm more right. focused on just fixing who I am and doing what I need to do for my children. <sighs> I was no, I was I was rocking with this lady, man. Until she brought in that 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 babe that that third child by the by the second dude, and she already said it like he's not even in the same state. He already had two children by two different women, and the fact that now she's like, I I shouldn't have left. I shouldn't have divorced my first. Salute to it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Salute to the homie Derek. He said the rain dam is broken. I feel better now. <laughs> it was too peaceful. You stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that with you, Derek. If I'm just watching the video chilling, Derek be like, bro, where's the rain at? <laughs> this video is my origin story. This time. Yeah, belt man. That's funny, bro. That's funny. <laughs> we need that. Shit. Salute to you, Derek. Appreciate the super chat, man. This is ridiculous, bro. This is ridiculous, man. And on a, on a side note, I said it. I don't care. If she want to fuck this dude who already had the, the, the second dude from Arkansas, fuck him. You just don't have to have a baby by every single person that puts a dick in you. And I'm sorry. I put the, the responsibility of female or reproduction on ladies because of this very situation. Protect yourself so that you don't become pregnant because a dude can skate the fuck off just like Mr. Arkansas over here. And as much as I want to, I can dig into him, but he already had he already had two children by two different women. So people show you who they are ahead of time, man. If you, I'm sorry, man. I don't, unless you marry, bro, unless you've been married each time, I don't, I think people who have multiple children by multiple people are gross, man. Fucking fight me, bro. I don't care. I don't understand we all make mistakes or whatnot. It'd be different if it's one time. But if you got four children by four different people, you're gross. Fuck you. You're gross. I'm sorry. There's no other way to cut it. And that applies to your mother. Your mom's gross. Salute to the homie son Moses, the wine gang, two up, two down, holding up VA's hell. <laughs> Salute to you. Salute to you, son Moses representing VA. Was she? Oh, yeah, she was from, she, they were from Virginia originally. Yeah, bro. Yeah, man. Salute to you. At least we don't know which part of VA. <laughs> I appreciate you, son Moses. If the psychology, the field of psychology and therapy in the United States was actually something competent, I would recommend that you go to it. The problem is I have absolutely no faith in it whatsoever. It turns screwed up people into absolutely screwed up people. 
it just makes them more comfortable being the way they are. Actually. But uh, definitely in your case, I mean, it's very, very obvious. We've got an Where's extreme my money, selfishness streak that isn't taking into account other human beings. And that 100% of the time goes bad. Fellas, there are a lot of you out here and y'all are looking for easy wins. We don't warn you about single moms because we're being mean. We warn you about single moms because there is a selfishness streak that creates the single mother. The single motherhood is a symptom of something else. And until that something else is resolved, exercised, removed, the problem is always there. It's always there. Until you deal with that, then you won't be able to get anything fixed because you're dealing with an individual who is mired in conceit and narcissism. They're literally burning down their whole lives around them and loving every minute of it. They're falling in love with the suffering and the hardship, at least for a while they do, until the phone stops ringing. You see, what breaks narcissism is isolation. Narcissists thrive when they can get around other people or other people want to be around them because they want to get something from them. Is once they run out of anything that most other people want, that's when the narcissism collapses on itself. That's when it turns to something else. Loneliness, sadness, isolation, depression. Because they've run out of people to abuse. It's much better if they just stop being a person who abuses other people. But generally speaking, it never stops. They just keep going until they wreck themselves and they just run out of people to abuse. There are a lot of fellows out there, y'all are trying to get easy wins. And the worst thing in the world you can be is be an uncompetitive man because uncompetitive men are lazy, intellectually lazy. Doesn't matter what their income is. They're looking for an easy win. And females, selfish females are very good at ringing in guys. The truth is they're actually very good at it. When they want to uh, turn on that, you know, Jezebel thing, they can turn it on. A chick who's been sleeping with a bunch of men, she knows the dark arts of uh, sexual sorcery. She knows the dark arts of sexual sorcery. And to you fellas, if you are vulnerable, they know how to ring you in. They will know how to ring you in. They're always great conversationalists. They're open about their lives. They're very engaging. Salute to Zeddy was right. He said, I'm 90% sure he probably told her that he didn't want to have a kid. Women will still have the child after the father says he doesn't want the baby. I'm glad my grandmother isn't around to see our people now. Bro, I did a video on this, man, like a month or two ago. I reacted off the homie, Jay Reed TV. We played a clip of his yesterday, and he talked to a chick that was just like that. 24, had her first child with a dude. She went into it knowing they were just messing around. They weren't in, you know, in a relationship. She got pregnant. He told her, even I think he even told her ahead of time he didn't want to have any children. And so she went to, when she got pregnant, she went to him like, what you want to do? He's like, what you mean, what do I want to do? I told you I didn't want to have any children. And she like, well, I don't do the whole opting out. So you're going to have this baby. And it's like, and I said that in the video, what's the point of you even asking them, man? That's why, fellas, protect your seed. Once it's in their belly, it's, it's their body, their choice. It don't matter what you say, man. That's why you got to wrap it up, bro. You have to protect your seed, man. They know how to do their hair and their nails, and they've had a lot of experience. And if you're overlooking that, you will mess around and marry it. You'll mess around and marry it. And by the way, how long were you and Mr. Man married again? 15 years. We had a 17 year relationship, though. 15, 15 years. I guarantee years. you it didn't take him 15 years to see the warning signs. Think about that for a few moments. It didn't take him 15 years to see it, but he stayed. Hell, after he had the kid, he probably felt that he was obligated to it. I wonder if he felt the same way today. So just fellas, just understand there's a lot of you out here. That's the situation you're in, or that's the situation you're faced with. And a lot of you are particularly susceptible. You're not trying hard enough. You're not competitive enough. Thus, you're not desired enough. Thus, now you're starting to look for easy wins. And you think that this is an easy win, and it's not. 
This right here is not an easy win. Get a drink. I'll be right back. This is a very high cost win. This is a very costly win. <laughs> very costly. Because once you get in, there you are. And now that you're in, she wants everything to focus on her. And she didn't do that when she was at the beginning stage. At the beginning stage, she didn't say it's going to be all about me. No, they never do that. She wants to wait until after she got you in. Once she's got you in, now it needs to be about her. And by the way, that's what she's doing with the guy now. This guy's like, okay, I want to have a relationship with you. And she's like, nah, I'm good. Now, he was great to get pregnant by, but now she doesn't feel like she has the level of control she wants. Now she's defaulted back to, okay, it's about me. Because it'll always be about her. There's not going to be a time that it's not about her. It will always be about her. All the time. Every time. And until that, you call me tonight and say, you listen to my program, that's great, that's wonderful. Until that gets dealt with, this is going to be something that negatively affects everybody around you. You can't be a credit or a help to everybody around you or you know, a positive to everybody around you when your world revolves around yourself and what you want. I'll see you because by definition, you're walking in the room saying, okay, I'm here to get what I want and I'm going to sacrifice everybody else in the meantime. Everybody else is here to be sacrificed on the altar of what I want. And that's not a temporary decision that you make and then walk away from. That's a lifestyle. And every time you get comfortable, that demon is going to rear its head. So you're going to have to make a change in yourself because a female that does not serve is not a female. She's some other animal. Mm -hmm. A female that does not see it as her primary responsibility to serve, that she understands the way in which you get men to extend themselves for you genuinely is to demonstrate that you're extending yourself for them. And not to the extent that you wish to, but to the extent that is necessary, not what you feel like doing. You do what is necessary, not what you feel like. And you haven't demonstrated that you do that. And by the way, your son has witnessed that. Javon, what up, So though? either he's going to be hostile towards it or he's going to be a little beta who accepts women exploiting him because he watched his mom do it. And you, and you won't like that when you see the little uh, 20-year-old version of you doing your son the way you did his father. You're not going to like that. You ain't going to like that at all. When you see that happening to your son, these little old slick little broads been watching Instagram and Cardi B and everything else, and you know full damn well they're slicker than y'all are. And when you watch her doing that to your son, you won't like it. You're going to really, really, really not like that. You're going to be like, what the hell? That's my son. I'm not going to let some little old fast broad sit up here and get over on my son, and yet he'll gravitate to it because he's learned it under you that this is a functional home. Facts, SP. He's used to seeing it now. And when she does it, he's not going to have this shrieking recoil reaction. He's going to be sitting right at home. You're going to be like, what the hell are you doing? Boy, don't you do what the hell she's doing? Yeah, he watched you do it for 15 years. This doesn't shock him. It doesn't offend him. It doesn't shock the conscience. <laughs> This is mom. Like I say, I can't guarantee that will happen. I certainly hope it doesn't. We're going to find out in the next couple of years if it is. We'll find out then. So I would love to refer you to therapy. I just can't think of a damn decent therapist who could do worth a damn. If I ever find one, I'll let you all know. I might have to have you all fly into town because there's probably going to be just one. But uh, beyond that, <laughs> what I would advise you to do is you need to really reexamine this selfish streak. Having more children, I think you should uh, fall back on that until we get some of these other issues resolved. And Quiet storm. Let me know if you're still in the chat. And then if a quality male sees you as fit to make a commitment to, maybe then we can begin, not finish, but begin the discussion of maybe addressing reproductive issues. But until then, I think it'd be a good idea to close the shop and to focus on not being selfish at all 
and focus on being uh, more focused on what, how this is affecting your children. I accept it. And they Thank might so they much. might need counseling for it. Now, there's a different issue. They If they require counseling, school counselors tend to be better than the ones for adults. So I will say that. The one for kids tend to be better than the ones for adults. Uh, but definitely that's going to be something to keep in mind as well. I certainly wish you well on that. I want to thank you for your candor in this regard because I'd love to say that you're an isolated case, but you're not. You're not a common case, but you're not an isolated one. And it's important that we have these conversations because a whole bunch of folks out there don't really realize how bad their situation really is or they don't understand the gravity of everything around it and how it affects everything that they're doing or trying to do. So having this conversation with you tonight, I think uh, certainly does help to illuminate that. I'll let you have the last word. I appreciate your time. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I thought you were done. I no, greatly uh, appreciate your time. Thank you no. so much. All right. Well, thank you very much. And uh, please do give us a call again. We would like to keep up with you. Oh, thanks. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> no, ma'am. I, I am, so I am the statement. only person that you all know who does this, who can say those three words, call me back. I'm the only yeah. one that you all know who will say that. So... No, you're not here for entertainment. You're not here to be fodder for laughs or uh, for entertainment value. You're real people. You're not entertainment value to me. You are real people. And these are real results. We're going to be walking the streets with your sons, with your daughters, with your grandchildren. Who, right. are, who are now the grandchildren of your mother and whatever your mama did with you. So we're now walking the streets with her grandchildren just as we'll be walking the streets with your grandchildren. So no, ma'am, this is not entertainment. This is real. This is life and death and the stakes are real. So definitely, I would, um, like, to, I would like to hear from you later. All right. And I'll be just keeping notes and staying abreast whenever you have shows. They do a lot for me. I really appreciate you. You have a great rest of your night. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. No, folks, this is not entertainment for me. This is real. This is life and death. This is the real world. We grow up around these kids. This is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with real people. A lot of the folks think they got it on the ball, and they really don't. A lot of them think they got it correct, and they really don't. If you are a person who is criminally selfish, then that's never going to go away because you need somebody to get over on. You need somebody to use and exploit. And... They will drain you, man. If you're a guy out here and you get hooked up with boss babe, they will drain you. They will sit there and drain your life force out of you. Lou to the race and Asian. He says, when everything is going wrong, it's time to have another kid. That will make me happy again. It's some crazy. Bro, I don't understand it, man. I would love to get the women's perspective on this, man. I, I don't understand it as well. Again, Take all the dick you want. You want you want you want two? You want to get double penetrated the DP scene? Y'all have at it, man. They could pass you around like a bong. I don't care. But it's the people that make the babies out of this shit. Back to it, bro. They'll drain it right out of you. And then move on to the next one. Did you get that, fellas? They will drain the life force right out of you and then move on to the next. And she literally did it with my man. After he, she held him down for four and a half years when he went to prison. He got out, moved him from VA to Iowa to get away from the streets. He got a he got a nine to five job, but he wasn't progressing in the fashion that she deemed was appropriate enough. So then she divorces him. So after they have a second child, when she divorces him, he moves back from Iowa to VA and gets gets deleted out here in these streets because he went back to the streets, man. And then found another dude and had, years later had a baby with him. Then she tried to pour her, allegedly, her wife energy into him trying to tell him because he was a street dude too, telling him to get straight. And then, but he didn't even want his life, bro. It's a mess, bro. 
The man wasn't dead two years, moved right on to another one. Hell, he was probably only dead about a year. She moved right on to the next. Step right over his body. Let me move right on to the next. It'll drive you nuts. It'll drive you mad dealing with people who are, you know, that unfeeling and unempathetic. So, fellas, you have to be careful. You have to be careful. I started tonight's program looking at the numbers about this because numbers are something that men can wrap their heads around. So when I tell the guys, do the math, and then they do the math, and the math doesn't add up, the math ain't math, and I want you to recognize where your value is. I want you to recognize where your value is. Your value is in seeing where the numbers actually are. Where's my money, So that as a man, you don't undervalue yourself. If that brother had had a few more years, he probably could have turned the whole damn situation around. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. The women are putting a value on themselves, but what they're saying by not making a numerical value, the women don't make it a numerical value because what they're saying is, oh, we're priceless. Meanwhile, the fellas are out here producing and folks are putting a price tag on it. Guys, they're, they're never going to make this a fair level playing field for you. You have to do that for yourself. You have to do that for yourself. But take it seriously because the stakes are real. The stakes are real. If you don't take this seriously, no one else will. I want to thank you all for joining us here tonight. Appreciate you guys. <laughs> Raise, I got this one from Marissa. I'll grab it. Yo, let's get away from the streets to Iowa where there's no job. You so broke. That's what I'm saying. Bang! Bang! It's good! Salute to Arissa. Let me grab this super chat here. Salute to you guys, man. We made it, man. We made it through. Let's see. Man, this, I got to get it. Man, I'm going to get a new camera because I can easily afford a new camera. This camera is not where it's at. Let me move this chat here and move this down for you. My camera's crooked. Yeah, it's time. It's definitely time for new camera. New camera time. Let's see. Salute. And I just bought this camera. Salute to Arissa. She says, they don't think about their children. This is why women think with emotion and not logic, which is bad for our society. Bang! Bang! It's good! The crazy thing, Arissa, is that if you said that amongst, like, mainstream, like, television or whatever, like, you would get ostracized for it. Because it's a simple fact, man. Women move through feelings and men move through um, uh, logic. There's nothing wrong with admitting that. It doesn't make one better than the other. That's just saying what it is, but society won't even allow you to say that mainstream. No, no, no. So, oh, quiet. So, the reason I asked why you was here was because I got a video for, I think what I'm going to play tomorrow is, I appreciate everybody rocking with your boy today, kicking in on the super chats and the cash apps as well. Make sure you guys subscribe to Mona D. Who else? Mamas, go ahead and throw your links down there. Mona D, Smoke and Talk, all you guys, you already know what to do. And but oh tomorrow I wanted to play a clip from I'll send it to you Quiet Storm. It's basically Tariq Nasheed. It's from his radio show. What I'm talking about, man, he just has like a half an hour call, man, where he goes back and forth with this dude. And when I'm talking about, I had tears in my eyes. Not even five minutes. I don't even want to. I want to listen to the rest of it with y'all. I want to blind react to it. When I had tears in my eyes, not even five minutes into the call, like. I'm like, dude, this is going to be legendary, but I don't know how good it'll translate over to a stream because it's not a video. We're all listening to an audio call. I didn't, I, I've never done that before. I didn't know if you guys wanted to do it. I'm going to do it anyway. But yeah, that's what I was thinking about, just getting you guys' opinion on that. And then I think I'm going to do the other caller, the first caller from this very same show. It was a woman, and she was just all over the place. She was all over, over the place trying not to se- seem like a modern woman destroying her Marriage for no reason when she 100% was the exact same thing. Let's see. So, yeah, let's see. This is a great combo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No doubt, man. No doubt, man. This is a deep cut. And that's why I liked it because it was just one call. Like, we used to be back and forth with all these kindred men and just listen to her make mistake. Quiet Storm make a great observation for Jazzy because she's like one of the young. I think Jazzy's like 19 or 20 or something like that. And, yeah, it would be great to hear, man, for, you know, especially some younger women. And, fellas, man, you just got to – you know what I'm saying? Protect your seat. We talked about that as well. But I just, I can't get over her leaving her husband. It was terrible enough. But her going back and having the, that's what, he, it's the the baby making with randos that irritates me the most out of everything. Because the babies are the ones who end up paying for it. And then on top of it, not only with randos, you have babies with men who have already established 
that they don't take care of the children they already have, man. They already have children. They don't take care of them. And they, but the women, these women will sign right up and be baby with mama number three. Be baby. Jesus Christ. I'm glad my sister got married. I thought it was weird. My sister got married when she was like 19. I was like, I thought that was kind of, I'm so glad she did. And she's been married ever since 20 years and not even 40 yet. Thank the Lord, bro. I'm so glad my sister and my mom ain't but I couldn't imagine. When she had her second, when she had her third child with that second man, her son was 18. I could imagine. I've been 18 years old and my mom pregnant again. Hey, yo, what the fuck? Are you serious? But when I was 18, I think my mother was like 41. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Appreciate everybody uh, for rocking with your boy today. And the abuse, Moses, and the abuse card is a double standard out there. Oh, yeah, facts, facts, facts. Oh, they cover me when I say that. Bang! Bang! <laughs> It's good. I know they do, Arissa. I was talking to my sister, grown folk, talk about that, and I was talking about Pink Book Lessons. I love Pink Book Lessons. I'm like the smartest thing Pink Book Lessons ever did was not show her goddamn face because all the ruckus Pink Book, how many pissed off women she the enemies she done made throughout the years. I'm like Pink Book better not never show her face, bro. They will send somebody. I know she in the south somewhere. They will send somebody to her door to get her, man. They don't like that shit, especially when it comes from other women. Let's see, please do. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, it's the. It, it was just the, um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. Damn, see, Quiet Storm, that's why I wanted to bounce this off you. Yeah, Jason Black is basically an audio call with good representation. Yeah, you're right. And and I peeped why, because I realized I know YouTube now. And I realized why why he does that. He throws in the pictures, you know, all that kind of, and it gets your attention. Put some eye candy and boobs on the screen, and us, he just will go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Damn, now I got to do more work. Good point. Yeah, yeah. I throw a little, throw a little, uh, little TNA on there, and then we get it. Salute to the squad. Oh yeah. And last thing. Let's see. The terrible part. I know women in life that move like that, man. Like I said, man, I, I gave it, I gave it, I gave the situation to my, to my cousin. I, I said the situation to myself. You know about my cousin doing that, man. And the crazy thing, and I said it in the video, is my cousin. Well, she, my cousin tried to do it. So many of these women do. If you watch a video of a woman who, who has a baby by a dude who already has like multiple children by multiple women, they always say the same thing. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know. And here's what I say to those women. Stop the cap. You do realize that we can see you lying, right? Don't nobody believe that shit. My cousin tried to tell me the same thing. I was like, cuz, why would you go? I was just been bugging me. Why would you go back after 10 years with one child and that, and her first child's father didn't want to be with her and she knew that and she still had his baby. That's Where's fine. my money, bitch? But to have a baby with a dude who already had 10 children by nine different women, why would you do that? And she looked me dead in my face and was like, Theo, I didn't know. I didn't know. But she forgot was that I knew about this dude because they went to high school together. And they've already had like this little puppy thing since high school, 20 something years later. And I'm like, cuz, I didn't say it to her, but I was like, cuz, you told me about this nigga 10 years ago when he had seven, eight children. Man, there's they, so many of them lies say they don't know. They know, man. It's just my mom was pregnant when I was 18. But there you go. <laughs> there you go. It's just, it'd be a little bit weird for me. It'd be a little bit weird to me. But also realize that even though my mom wasn't, I think my mom did it the right way. My mom did it the way that a lot of women should do. My mom had me and my sister and my father. They weren't, they, they didn't, they, they broke up. And then she had my, my brother with my son. She had my brother with my brother's father. And then they were engaged, whatever happened, they broke up as well. But one thing about my mom was that I never saw my mom, my brother's five years younger than me, but I never saw my mom with a man ever. Like outside of talking to like my dad or like my brother's father, like them laughing and joking, my mom ain't never brought a dude over. My None of that shit. And my mom, re, my mom finally got married in her 50s. So we all, all three of us was grown by then. My mom did it the way that, and I didn't even realize it. My mom did it the way people are supposed to do it. If, if you, you know, best case scenario when you got them babies. Salute to Eric. He said, Kate, uh, Where's my money, bitch? It in the chat. I'll grab it right now, Derek. Salute to, oh, salute to EJ. No, where'd my phone go? Oh, it's right here. Salute to EJ. He says, home wrecking, bitch. <laughs> the facts, bro. But yeah, that's, and, I, and I told my ex-wife that. My ex-wife, because we have our son, and then she had a, 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 a daughter by a different dude. And... We were talking about that. I was like, yo, you're gonna have to wait till they're 18 to start dating. And she's like, hey yo, what the fuck? And then I explained to her why. And she was like, oh, that makes sense. I was like, you never thought about this shit? Man, you make your bed, you gotta lay in it. Salutes, he said, for the Derek Gaines says, for play the clip of the dark skin. For play the clip of the dark skin. Lady. What clip? What clip are you talking about, Derek? What 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 I don't have a problem doing it. I, I plan on playing a clip tomorrow of the 
<laughs> the G's and Shuttles work clip. We be like that. I don't know what clip we talking about. Let's see. I tried to buy a super chat and YouTube uh, wouldn't let me. Yeah, YouTube is funny like that, man. I don't know what clip you talking about, Derek. Just just let me know in the email, Derek. If you don't let me know in the chat, I'm not sure which dark skin. Play the clip of the dark skin lady tomorrow. I'm not sure which clip you're talking about, but yeah. You let me know. You let me know in the chat or send me an email, and then I definitely can play it for you guys. What about Crimson Cure and Danica? I love Crimson Cure, says uh, Jizzle910. I love Crimson Cure. I've reacted to Crimson Cure a couple of times. I think I reacted to her a couple weeks ago. Danica Marie, I have I've subscribed to her, but she's another person. I haven't really watched her content. I know she's got a big channel. But I haven't really watched her content enough. And I, I don't like to, to, to say, hey, I, I like somebody's content or not unless I've sat back and watched multiple videos of theirs. So I can't say about Danica Marie. I think I think I rock with her from 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 a, from a distance. But I definitely rock with Crimson Cure. Crimson Cure to a deal. Let's see. Still confuses me. Larry says, still confuses me. Some of these, some of them will chase a man who is known for having multiple. That's what I'm saying, Larry. And Larry, I wanted to ask you a question, man. I wanted to put you on the spot a little bit. Because I know... Um, you said you didn't have any, was it, has there, have you, has there ever been a moment where you regretted not having children? And I don't blame any person for not, you know, any guys for not having children, Larry, because I had my son in my twenties. I didn't want children, but I started to want children after like 35 and like now I'm cl closing on 40. I still have, I want children now, but I was just wondering, did you ever have that? Did you ever have that time in your life? I was just curious about that because I think Z Wiff said he, he didn't, Z, I know Z Wiff was like 50. And he said he didn't have that feeling whatsoever. So I was just curious about that. Let's see. Got to start pulling the car facts on some people out here. Yeah. 906 says, I was in the same situation. My mom decided to leave my dad. I was in the same situation. My mom decided to leave my dad and got pregnant when I was 20 years old with another two. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. My mom decided to leave my dad and got pregnant when I was 20 years old. My mom would joke. I remember like joke with my mom. I was like, I remember like joking as a kid, like not like as a kid, like a teenager, like, I don't know why, but I used to joke, me and my mom used to joke like that. I'm like, mom, you better not walk in here. She's like, I'm gonna come in here pregnant. I was like, you better not come in here pregnant. My mom used to joke about that shit, but never. Like I said, I think she did it the right way, man, because she literally, she literally didn't have any men around. Like, mom didn't have any men around whatsoever. She got married at 50, and it, that's what I'm saying. Like, your, your mom could be getting in. If she was, she played that shit off good, because I wouldn't even have known. Email, let's see. Of the email, the lady in white. Oh, oh Derek, bro, oh, bro. <laughs> Derek, I, I know what the hell. Sure, sure, we can do that, Derek. I know exactly what you. She was, oh, oh, she was nice too, Derek. She was nice, but uh, yeah, man. I told her I went to her TikTok. I was like, oh, who's this chick? You stupid. I could do that, bro. Let's see. I like, I like both. I like both. They got both got good content. Okay, yeah, I got to check out more Danica Marie. I got to check out more Danica Marie. But Larry and Steel, they don't know. I wanted to have kids since I was a kid. Best day of my life was when my son was born. I was twenty eight. Yeah, man. See, see, I was the complete opposite, Rachel. I was one of those kids who did. As a kid, I didn't want kids. I was like, "Fuck out of here, baby." When I was young, man, and so, <laughs> so like I said it before, like me having a child, people, people were like surprised that you had a baby. Fucked up, yo. Hey! <laughs> hey! It's good. Give it a buck. But it's all good though, Razor, because next summer my son turns 18 and I'm childless again. I'm hitting these, I'm hitting these Detroit, these Detroit streets like a childless man. Hey! <laughs> hey! It's good. Black man, I'm 42 with no kids. There you go, bro. I'm be I'm gonna be 41 next year. I'm 41 next year with no kids. Like, hey man, what it, ladies. What it do, baby? To the squad. I appreciate everybody rocking with your boy today. And again, if you guys need help with your channel, I have the calendar open to book some consultations time. I look at the channel and I don't be, and I don't be on, just if you guys are curious, I don't be on that one hour, you know, it's an hour, but if I don't have anybody booked after that, yeah, I'll definitely spend some more time with you. It's no big deal at all. Salute to the squad. Larry, I, I wanted to get this before I got out of here. Larry said, I had the desire to have children when I was thirties and forties. When I reached 50, I no longer decided to have them. See, <laughs> I, I just wanted to see, because it's different for everybody. Like, Rajan said he wanted to have children since he was a kid, and I didn't want to have, I was anti-children when I was younger. I was anti-children, and then I had my son. My son made me, it, it, it loosened me up to children. Like, I like kids now. I hated kids before. I won't even tell you, like, it wasn't I disliked them. I hated kids before. I'd be like, fuck your baby. To your baby face. <laughs> but me having a son likes me mature, and I actually like children now. But 
Yeah, but that's cool. I wanted to see that. I had a desire to have children when I was 30s, 40s. When I reached 50, I no longer desire to have them. Yeah, man. Yeah, and that's funny to me, man, because I never wanted children. And that's when I started to want them when I was 35, and now I'm closing in on 40, and I'm like, I give myself to 45, bro. If it ain't, I ain't having them, and I ain't having no more. Salute to the squad. Appreciate everybody. Theo Bennett gets our baby since he was young. <laughs> Facts, J. Will. Facts, man. But I'm telling you, me having my son, it, it, it softened me up the kids. Now I like kids now. I like kids, man. I, I'm, I'm not going to like your kid as much as I like my own kids or people who share my same last name. I keep it a buck from that aspect. But salute to the squad, man. Sean Jackson said, I always wanted kids after having two with my wife. Maybe she could convince me for a third, but I'm good, man. I'll tell you, man, I got one child and from my first, but I have to get married again. I, I want two more kids, bro. I want two more kids, but I'm getting older, man. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a, we'll put that up in the air. We'll put a pin in that. Salute to the squad, man. Appreciate all y'all being with your boy. Fall out. the bottom line, cause Stone Cold said so. Bang! Bang! It's good! next time, nigga. Look, fuck you. Fuck the plane you flew in on. Fuck them shoes. Fuck those socks with the bell on it. Fuck your gay ass fairy faggot accent. Fuck them cheap ass cigars. Fuck your yuck mouth teeth, fuck your hairpiece, fuck your chocolate, fuck Guy Ritchie, fuck Prince William, fuck yeah. the Queen. This is America. My president is black and my Lambo is blue, nigga. Now get the fuck out of my hotel room. And if I see you in the street, I'm slapping the shit out of you. Esther, then get no, out. Then Esther, Esther, I don't yes, care. Esther, 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 Esther,
goddamn right. GTD. What does GTD stand for? Man, you are in a court of law. There are a lot of people in here. We can't hear you. Your Honor, you're going to have to make them speak up. What does GTD stand for? Got the draws, okay? <laughs> yeah, he got the draws. I want to sing a little song that uh, kept me going when I had troubles. We're at the beach. Everybody had matching towels. Somebody went under a dock, and there they saw a rock. But it wasn't a rock. It was a rock lobster. Rock lobster. Rock lobster. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be okay. You're goddamn right. <laughs> 